Whoa, it coughed. Wow, that was loud. All right. This meeting is being recorded per Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. Good evening. Welcome to the May 25th, 2021 meeting of the Wethersfield Historic District Commission. For those of you who have not been here before, tonight's session is comprised, composed of two parts, a public hearing and a public meeting. In the public hearing, we ask that each applicant in turn come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give, it, give us an opportunity to clarify what you are proposing to do and for what you ask us, and, and for you to ask us any questions. Also, commissioners may voice an opinion or suggest based on their own feelings. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, or on rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting, but you do not need to do so. The results for tonight's meeting will be available from, from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other required permits such as zoning, inland wetlands, or building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before beginning instruction. With this, I will ask our clerk, Commissioner Lyons, to read the legal notice. Thank you. Legal notice, Town of Wethersfield Historic District Commission. The Wethersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, May 25th, 2021 at 7.30 p.m. on the following applications seeking a certificate of appropriateness. Application 6040-21, Residential Resorts, LLC, seeking to install six-foot cedar fencing around rear yard at 330 Main Street. Application 6041-21, Suzanne Barton seeking to install wood picket fence along southwest and northeast sides of property to match existing fence at 55 Main Street. Application 6042-21, David Cody seeking to install six foot cedar fence along left rear property line at eight Wilcox Street. Application 6043-21, Kevin and Amy Duvall seeking to remove existing vinyl siding and replace with Emerson double four inch vinyl siding in indigo, rebuild rear existing deck using AZAC in slate gray color at 89 Hartford Ave. Application 6044-21, Isabel Giovanci seeking to install five foot cedar fencing in rear yard of 227 Garden Street. Application 6045-21, Bill and Chris Donahue seeking to replace existing fence on south side with universal board fencing in similar style at 360 Hartford Ave. Application 6046-21, Joseph uh, Yercoli, sorry, uh, seeking to replace front railings and steps with Fibertron Armor Guard white railing system and decking in Nantucket Gray risers to White Azac at 54 Center Street. Application 6047-21, Arnold Yavino seeking to install cedar split rail fence along right property line at 6 Hubbard Place. If you wish to review the applications on file, you may request a copy by contacting HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or by calling 860-721-2836. Live participation is available by audio format. Any residents interested in speaking on an application or wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersillct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting to be sent a phone number for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the email. Town of Weathersill, Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized data at Weathersill, Connecticut, this 10th day of May, 2021. And I Thank apologize you, for the names. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Alliance. All right, we'll get started with the public hearing. Application number 6029-21, Nova 22 Group LLC uh, with 26 Wilcox Street. Do we have someone? Hi, good evening. I'm Daniel from Nova 22. Name and address for the record, please. 
Daniel and Moser, company Nova 22 Group LLC, 80 Silver Springs Drive in Hickenham, Connecticut. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Daniel, what do you have for us in addition today? I know we've looked at this before. Yeah, so I provided um, some hard samples of the railing and material in the, the last work and a copy as well of the cut sheets of the PT lumber that can be used. And I believe you have the pictures from last time of the existing deck that's there, which we're going to be matching exactly uh, to the spec of the 3D uh, printout. And then we also have the windows in play as well on the first floor. Okay. Any commissioners wishing to uh, discuss anything on the application? Any new submitted, submitted documents? Yes, Mark. Um, Please I, have a, I have a question about the absence of a toe kick in the uh, deck. Um, maybe I um, viewed the picture wrong, but I think that the um, proposal for a um, railing system that has spindles that go all the way from the floor to the railing is kind of contrary to what we usually prefer to see on a house of this vintage. Um, and practically speaking, we tend to favor the toe kick so that people can shovel their um, decks off a little bit easier. So I don't know if any other commissioners uh, have this concern, but um, I think that a stipulation uh, for the a toe kick would be a good addition. Uh, and while the uh, applicants here to talk about it, I wanted them to have a chance to react to that in case there was some strong feeling against it. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm a little confused with the toe kick. So the railing, I prepared a small sample. It's got a three inch gap from the decking to the bottom uh, rail. So I'm not sure if the, is that what you mean, the toe kick underneath the bottom rail of the spindles? Yes, uh, perhaps the drawing I was looking at um, didn't seem to show that. Um, okay, it could it could be that you're proposing one, uh, and it's just that uh, I the drawing that I thought I saw um, didn't seem to include it. So, uh, oh, if yeah. you're if you're okay with that, that's a uh, a great thing. No, I apologize. There should be a you know a, a typical three inch gap from the bottom decking to the bottom, uh, you know, uh, rail? rail of the spindle. So, so probably the pictures doesn't do it justice. Daniel, can I, can, so the, the picture right after the, showing the, the drawing on the deck in red on the back of the house, Correct. the next picture after that shows an existing railing. Correct. Are you planning on matching that railing? Exactly, yeah, that's what they have on the back. This will be wrapping around the back side as well okay. of the house. All right. So if you, Doug, if you look at that, that uh, picture immediately following that one, uh, it shows uh, the, the existing railing has that bottom uh, rail that you were talking about along with the top rail and it. It does kick it up about three inches off of the, uh, the deck. That's great. Thank you. I uh, may not have gone deep enough into the page. Uh, but when I saw that, it kind of just caught me, and I remembered that I did want to say something about it tonight. <coughs> Thanks That's to the contract. Good, good point. You better bring up. Yes. Thank you for bringing that up. Are there any other questions from the commissioners? Okay. Hearing none. Um, anybody from the public wishing to comment in favor or against this application? Okay. Anybody raising their hand, Kim? I'm going to say no. All right. Moving on to application 6034-21, Cynthia Brown at uh, 32 Footpath Lane. Do we have anybody here from that application? I know that Cindy Brown is there. She is. <laughs> She's on the phone. I'm sorry. I'm out on Cape Cod. And again, my camera is not working. But I am Cynthia Brown. 
reaching you from Magansett Harbor, North Falmouth. In All any right. case, I reside at 32 Footpath Lane, where I have lived since 1961. Um, you have received a second version of the garage door that I should like to um, have placed. Um, but I will tell you that I really should like the committee to consider the first choice that I submitted on May 11th. I have driven around town looking at garage doors. I really like the garage door that I chose and submitted to you on May 11th. If you will note, and maybe you have not got a picture of it, but the fascia board above the garage door is rounded. I chose the rounded windows for the door purposely because I really felt it conformed better architecturally to the surround. So I know that my proposal was tabled, but I should like to ask the commission to reconsider. I really would like to have this door. You know, it's interesting for those of us who live on a corner lot. The front door is never used in my house. I have spent a great deal of money on my side door with paving, a new stoop, a rail, and an expenditure for landscaping. I really would like to update my door, which is failing, so that it looks decent. So it is with you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Brown. Are there any question, commissioners wishing to uh, ask any questions at this time? Okay. Uh, Go ahead. Yes. Sorry. Thank you. So, uh, Cindy, I uh, took a close look at what you uh, were seeking, and uh, I took a look at the uh, the door. And if I understand correctly, the door that you want us to pick has a curved top over each side of the windows. Is that right? Isn't it a double curve? window on the or on this door it is a curve to the right and a curve to the left just as the fascia board is now the picture that i'm looking at on um uh, this would be page 37 of our uh handout seems to show two curved tops uh, is one um, one on each side of the door, at least in the drawing on page 37. If any other commissioner thinks I'm misreading this as um, the proposed, the preference that the homeowners stated, then please let me know. But I think that uh, there's not, what's proposed doesn't seem to be uh, half a slope on one side and half a slope on the other, but a full curved top on each side of uh, the door. Is, that's what page 37 looks like to me at least. That is correct. Okay. Well, what I was thinking, Cindy, is that what you seem to be describing is something that looks more like the house to the left of you, uh, as you're in your house or to the right of you as you face your house. And when you look at that garage door, it has a curve um, that goes in a uh, downslope to the left, rises uh, to the right, and then the window section that's on the right half of the door starts high and slopes down uh, to the right. So. I wondered if what you thought of that kind of setup, because it seems like your door has um, a, a curve that's similar to that one. Yes, I see what you mean. It could be curved just to the right or just to the left. I would not care. 
I just would like it curved. Okay. Well, I guess part of the reason I asked about it is because I, I, um, you know, a person could want the door that's on uh, page uh, 38 or thereabouts uh, as kind of like a double eyebrow look, maybe. At least that's how it looks to me. But I think that there are quite a few examples that I saw of the door right next door to you um, in the uh, community. I found one on Oldham Road. I saw another on Center Street. And I wondered what you thought of, of those doors. And um, I can share a photograph of uh, a couple of those that I took um, although I'm sure you're familiar with some of these, uh, but you know, in terms of the um, uh, visit that we're having, right, the meeting we're having right now, I, I took a couple of photographs which I can um, try to share in some way. I meant to get these to our uh, coordinator before. I'm sorry I did not do that. Uh, so I'm not sure the best way to uh, share them, but for now I'm going to text them to her. Okay. We'll wait for technology. Have you to looked at the second sketch that was submitted to you? Yes. For yes. this meeting? Yes. Would you prefer that one? You no, know, Cindy, this is Claire. I think what we want is what you want. So we're just trying to find something that, that gets closer to what you're looking for. I think that's what Doug's doing. Thank you, Claire. Well, if the windows were just rounded, there are two sections of windows displayed on the sketch that I received from the company. If it were just rounded on the left-hand side of the left window and rounded on the right-hand side of the right-hand window, would that satisfy you? Well, I think that there are two issues. One issue is the uh, shape of the window the other is that increasingly, there seems to be deployed in the district um, doors that seem um, not so out of the ordinary anymore, that seem to have more of a real window look rather than an insert to, their, uh, to the glass portion. And that was part of the reason I was uh, wondering what you might think of the door on the house right next door to you. Um, it, since it's right there and is not that unusual, uh, as I said- Is that Lisa, Lisa Bowman's house to the right of the yes. front of my house? Right, and, and, and a similar door is on uh, the uh, cape to the right of uh, my house as you look at it. As I said, there's one, on, at least one on Oldham and there's at yes, least I've one seen the center. one next door to you, uh, Doug. Sure. And there's one on center and one on um, church. So this kind of door is more readily available than it used to be. And, and I, in fact, misread uh, one of the door window, one of the doors that was approved recently as uh, being what I thought was this format where the window looks more true than an insert. And uh, that is something that we're seeing more in the district. And like I said, at this point, I would be happy to not go further and uh, see if there's any chance that what I shared with the um, uh, coordinator can be shared. Uh, if not, then I can share my own, try to share my own um, image. Uh, but um, for now, uh, I think I said what I needed to, and uh, we could always reopen the public hearing um, in the meantime. Doug, Doug yeah. it's Kim. Can you share your screen? It's just going to take me a really long time to convert a picture on my phone. Sure. You get it onto this screen. 
So I will um, share content screen. Uh, Okay, so let me make sure I have uh, the right thing on the screen. Thank you. Here we go. So, uh, yes. So, Thank you, I'm almost there. Okay. I see there's a way to do it that's less, leads to less accidents. So I'll do that. Doug, I'm working on it, hold on. Oh, actually I have it, I, I'm pretty much there. Okay, so I think I'm all set, done. Okay, can you see anything? We're so yeah. impressed with you. Good job. Well done. Okay, so I'm got kind of toggling back and forth and uh, I don't know if that's what you're all seeing, but uh, one is Cindy's solid door and the other is the door next door, which I don't know if uh, my attempt to try to enlarge it, you also see Perfect. or not. Perfect, yeah. So. Okay. I guess that's part of uh, what seemed to be inspiring me, Cindy, was just what I saw as I was walking on your beautiful street. So if this is helpful to folks uh, and especially helpful to Cindy, uh, that would be my goal. Well, Are if the door other... can look just like that, that's fine. I think overhead door is a fine product. If I understand the door is already in, to me, my original design looked like that. So um, what's the fuss? <laughs> well, uh, so noted. I, I have a question for you. Uh, you wrote us and said that, of course, the goal originally was to try to get this done before you had other obligations. And it looks like you have at least a few more weeks of other obligations. I do. Uh, I'm not returning to Connecticut until the well, very end uh, of June. And I guess part of what I'm thinking is, is if we have just a little bit more time, um, it's something that uh, may come to a, a favorable end for everyone. So it's just a thought, like I said, we can discuss it more. We know what you would really like, uh, which is something that's already uh, known to us, uh, but we also know this and uh, it, it's something that might, uh, help accomplish uh, the same goal. At least I was trying to troubleshoot a little bit in the wake of the last meeting. And that's how I ended up taking these photographs. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes to listen. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Doug. Thanks for sharing. Are there any other commissioners, commissioners that would like to uh, speak on the pictures that uh, Commissioner Ovian has shared with us? Okay, uh, Doug, could you unshare, please? Oh, yes. Sorry about that. Thank you. All right. I'm Thank going, you. I am going to um, have us move along here, but before I do, are there any, are there, is there anyone uh, wishing to speak in favor or against this application before we move on from 6038-, I'm sorry, 6034-21? Oh, Okay, hearing none, we'll go to application 6038-21. And this is uh, Gove Restoration, 52 Garden Street. Hello. Hello, how are you? 
Good. My name is Matt Gove. I live at 70 Main Street. My clients are here as well, so I don't know if they uh, they want to introduce themselves. Yeah. Hi, Matt. We're on. Um, hi, Diane Gluttenberg and my husband, Mark. We are the residents at 52 Garden Street. So just here in case you have any questions. I know last time there were some questions regarding windows working and the like, so we figured we'd be on in case more questions arise. Thanks. All right. Thanks for joining. All right. Um, so we definitely took what you guys had, we heard what you were saying. <laughs> um, so we, we, we took what you said and kind of went back to the drawing board. Um, I actually went back to the house, I examined the windows and we did assess that there, there, there's a lot of windows that are just completely failing. They're non-operable, they can't be saved in my opinion. So from that point, we started to look at some other options. Um, and the first one we looked at was a wood option because we heard what you guys were saying loud and clear about the wood windows and the sort of the historical integrity of the house and maintaining that. So we looked at wood options and I looked at um, individual sashes and I looked at individual units of, of windows we could install. What it boiled down to though was the fact that it's just very cost prohibitive when we start getting into that range. Um, there's also a lot of additional costs that come into play with the, the painting of the exterior. So when we found that out, we kind of went back to the drawing board again. And I think we found a pretty, a pretty nice option that I feel plays into the um, sort of that historical component of the house and the porch. Before, if you guys remember, I, I proposed doing the Marvin Elevate window and on the front facade of the house, for instance, say, say the right-hand side, we were doing um, we were add, actually adding framing to that opening so that these windows could fit into place. And then we were going to be adding, you know, one by four trim around these windows. And to your point, it was going to change that front of the, of the house, you know, more, more so than um, I know you guys wanted. So what I did was I actually met with my Marvin rep and we came up with a design and a window product that I, I feel is a, a, a very, very good option. The, the homeowners have also agreed to kind of um, up their material selection and they chose the, the Marvin Ultimate um, narrow frame casement. And the reason we did this, well, there's, there's a few. First, they have agreed to do the cadet gray, which I mean, for the sake of computers and you know pictures and colors, this doesn't really do very much, but it does get us very close to the existing trim color that's there. So they've also agreed that they're going to take that color of the cadet gray and paint the rest of the trim on their house when they do go to paint the house in the next few years. So that was the first thing. So instead of a white window now, we're going to go with this cadet gray. Um, the second point is that instead of a seven eighths, um, we're going to go with a five eighths, which is more in keeping with what's there as well. Uh, we will still have that big uh, center bar to mimic that sash that's that, that they currently have. So we're gonna keep that, but still do that six over six um, grill pattern. The next thing with the narrow frame casement that I really like um, is, sorry, Doug, did you wanna say something? No, I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, the next thing about the narrow frame that I really like um, oppose, you know, in, in comparison to the, um, the Elevate window mm -hmm. is the fact that the narrow frame sash sits flush with the frame and trim. So if you drive by that house today, you see these casement windows that close into an existing opening. The existing opening is made up of a large, um, we'll call it a uh, two by eight piece of pine on the bottom. That piece is rotted. We're gonna replace that with a, with a cedar one. On top of that is a two by four material, um, which is a pine as well. We're gonna replace that with cedar. but. In that opening from that two by four up to the top trim and on the sides, those windows close into that frame. So when we go to do our replacement, we're not going to add any framing to the, to the openings. And we're going to use the existing openings, put these windows into place. And when these windows close, they're actually going to be flush with the frame. I do have an example here that I could show you, but with a typical new construction window, your frame sticks out, you know, two inches from past the sash. Right. So in this case, we're not going to have that at all. So the, fr the frame, the sash closes in flush with the frame. 
So it really mimics the look of what they currently have there. So I, I really like that. In addition to this, we can actually get on the fronts, we can get a quadruple window. So we won't need the, we don't have the need for the center post framing um, that we had before with the elevate window. So now we can actually get two double casements that are molded together and installed as one giant unit on the front, thus keeping the same finish and look um, the same. So it, it would really mimic, I think, what they they have there, and and keep it, um, you know, at least uh, affordable in a sense for, for my client. So those are just some of the some of the um, some of the main features of doing this. And like I said, I do have a sample here. I can try to lift it up and show you guys if you if you want to see it. It's not the exact window we'd put in, but it's a it's a it's an image of the uh, the narrow the narrow frame. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, hold on. Can you go back to full screen? Yeah, there, thank you. All right. I'm gonna give you the side view because the side view really shows the difference between the frame and the sash. You can see the sash, the, the frame does not stick out past the sash at all. It's, it's perfectly flush. So that really would mimic the, the look of what's what's there. Plus, this is the five ace. This is the five ace SDL bar that, that we have on the window. Again, it's not the same style window that we're going to be putting in in terms of the, the you know the light pattern or anything, but or even the color. But it gives you the it gives you the look of the um, the narrow frame. And Matt, what's the what's the material makeup? I'm um, sorry. Instead of a fiberglass exterior, um, was that Mark? Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so instead of a uh, fiberglass exterior, it's aluminum clad. And it's going to be that cadet gray. So it's not going to be white anymore. So it's going to be this color. So all of the components are going to be that. And then all of the, you know, we, we do have to take out the trim to put the windows in, but all that trim will be repainted that uh, color to match. Okay. And then the screens will be, you know, fixed to the interior of the, of the windows. Right. So Matt, this is Claire. Yes. Um, this all is very interesting, and I had I had looked at your application and was curious with it. Um, you've given us a lot of detail tonight, which is great. Um, what you've given us in terms of a new submission, kind of are the details of the Morven windows, but that's all. So I'm just thinking about in terms of trying to capture all of this detail that you've given us verbally. Um, you don't have that in writing in any way. Things like it's gray, it's 5H instead of 7H, the center bar, the sash is flush with the trim. Um, I, in my, I think, Kim, I don't know if, if you can weigh in on this, but I thought I had uh, sent that to you in my email. It's in, um, I'll pull it up, hold on. Okay. I, I'm sorry, I, I'm looking at the big packet. I'm looking like page 60, 61. And it does have the window details, but there's nothing else in that packet. Matt, is this what you're looking yeah. for? Yeah. No. So, Claire, certainly the uh, mutton sizes are called out yep. in the pictures somewhere. Yeah, that's what's, that's what's in the application. Yep. I did specify in my email to Kim um, that it was going to be the Cadet Gray. Um, I, uh, I don't know what else I specified, the aluminum clad. Um, Really, that the difference is the uh, that that the clad exterior, the color, and then the uh, the quadruple you know mold window. I don't I don't know if um, yeah. If you specified it in the email, I it, there's nothing for me to print out with that. So yeah. you know that's I can only print out the cut sheets that got it. We, we can stip it. We can stipulate that. Yeah. Yeah, and then you could actually see it in what she's scrolling through right now. As you can see, the um, the the, 
the quad window of, uh, which would flank that front door. So um, as opposed to the double that I had that was going to be separated by some trim, this is just all going to be evenly spaced out. So pretty. So you would have four, four on four on each side of the door. Mm -hmm. Just and like then, existing. What would be? Yeah. What would be the setup on the side? The sides. The, the sides. The sides Double. would be three, just just say, same as existing. Okay. Yep. And in order to make this work the way that we, that would be closest to the size too of what's there is we're going to have to actually. The, the great thing about these narrow frame casements is that you could actually install them without a nail flange. So in this case, we could actually remove that nail flange where we don't have the space because if you look at if the, the regular picture of that house where the sash is close to, closes up to about a three quarter, in some places, three quarters of an inch, in some places, probably five quarter inch, inch and eighth, inch a quarter. Um, but a nail flange won't work there. So our original plan was to frame it down so we could have the nail flange and you know trim it out. In this case, now with these windows, we could actually remove that nail flange and fasten through the jam. So it brings the, the, the sashes closer to that top trim, which again, maximizes the look of the of, of the of the porch and, and keeps it in keeping with what's there. So if uh, nobody else has anything to say right now, I uh, have another picture I'd like to share. Um, it will only take a second. Please, you're getting really good at this. <laughs> well, I guess uh, uh, I anticipated this maybe. So here we go. Uh, first, let me get these out. Sorry, let me cancel this. Try again before I... Oh, okay, here we go. So... Here we go. So this is a house on Main Street. Are you folks seeing it? Yes. Okay. Um, unbeknown, before I saw the submission, I was riding around town and I was trying to think of something that would work for the homeowner if they were seeking to modernize the window uh, um, to a window that looked somewhat consistent, an SDL essentially that looked consistent with what is there. And uh, I saw these casement windows on the side porch of this house on the left side of Main Street as you head to the cove. And I don't know if you see, do you see the expansion when I make it bigger? also yeah. or okay yeah. great so i have to say that uh, you know i would suggest the following things uh, be considered uh one is that i do think that in a color um and uh especially the profile that um the, matt is talking about here uh that's available with the marvin product that you could end up with a look that is substantially more attractive than the product that they presented us with previously. So that's uh, on the plus side. Um, also on the plus side, I am, um, I tend to be a believer in uh, SDLs that better replicate the look of uh, a TDL window, a uh, true divided light window. Um, I realize that you're giving up something with the glass that's substantial, but there are certain uh, trade-offs that are very difficult to reconcile um, in some cases with TDLs. And um, I don't know that that's the case here because I realized that the representation is that the windows that are there already are too far gone to be fixed. But I would suggest that unless you're planning to occupy the space year round, 
um, that you would do better to fix the windows you have and maintain the look of the old wavy glass um, because in the future, somebody may decide to either maintain that look uh, and keep it a seasonal porch or may decide to open it and, and create a sitting porch that's more connected to the outside. And as we have seen as recently as last week, once a year round window is in place, it's very difficult for people to go back on that. And you know, I, I think that what you might wanna consider is if there's already enough living space that's fully indoors for you, so that you maintain the ability to have that seasonal space uh, outdoors, uh, uh, I mean, in that location. That's a, a, a real individual choice. And you folks may have already made that choice, but I would suggest that that's what helps me decide between uh, arguments for um, the, um, as a homeowner, for maintain, maintaining single, pane glass and, and, and uh, keeping up the sash appropriately and uh, using something that only replicates the look of that. Uh, I do think that if all that thinking goes into this and, and there's a decision to create a, a year round space there, among the choices for dealing with that, what we've been presented today would maybe give us a look that's relatively similar to this. And, and I would say that that look, again, is much more acceptable than the look we were offered previously. But again, this is among the most visible corners in town with the most visible porches of this type, of which only a few really remain in the district. And again, I would think about whether or not I really net, need to use that uh, four seasonally versus uh, less than that. Uh, and if I were able to use it less than that, I think I would maintain what I have so that I can go uh, leave the maximum possibility of somebody opening the porch fully or maintaining one of the very few old glass front porches that we have left. So uh, those are my thoughts. Matt, yeah. can I ask you to show that sample one more time? I'd like sure. to see that side profile. Diagonal. I, I, hold on. I don't know if you can kind of, I don't know if you can see it from the side. Yes. No, no, I got it. Okay. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, All right. Any other uh, commissioners would like to? Uh... Can I can I weigh in on, on what Doug just said though? Absolutely, please. All right. All right. Um, so in terms of a seasonal space, but there's there's other there's other you know factors that play into what a seasonal space is, and one being heat. And in these porches, there there is there is no heat. But one of the things that we did look into was a, a TDL wood window, and the the cost of that was just it was. Um, we had an, we had a cost that was uh, almost triple the price of what we were originally pricing out. So we did look at that, but in terms of it being a seasonal space, in order to successfully run heat into a place like that, I mean, there's there's a lot of work that has to be brought to the commission before you can even create it and really make it into a, a useful four season space. So I know that's not their option or their goal right now. Their goal is to just get you know, some, some really nice, a, a nice looking functional window. Um, and so that's, that's just, that's one of the things that I wanted to say. It was about the, the heat, the lack of heat in that space. I, I appreciate that, Matt. And I, I would say I, I don't, uh, in fact, what I'm kind of advocating for here are good looking SDLs. Uh, yeah. I'm not necessarily saying because of the sacrifice of the glass that would happen anyway in a, uh, in most uh, commercial TDLs, mm -hmm. uh, you'd be ending up typically with new glass in those anyway. So to me, the trade-off uh, of what you gain for the TDL is not worth it because they tend to be bulkier yes. and heavier and you wouldn't have the nice low profile that you have there. So it's, it's not that I'm against um, 
um, S the SDL versus TDL. Yeah. But for me, it's it's a decision about giving up the look of an old porch with the glass that you have. Um, and and I understand all the pluses and minuses of that. And that's what I was just sharing um, was my feeling of where you kind of, uh, where you might find a, a decision point. So thank you so much. I, I am so grateful that uh, in my travels, I ended up finding something so close to what you were thinking. Uh, it's a sign that you were really trying to problem solve with the commission and that's thank appreciated. Thank you. Any other commissioners? All right, hearing none, anyone in favor or against this application? Again, hearing none, we will move on to application number 6040-21, Residential Resorts LLC, 330 Main Street. Good afternoon, okay. folks. Uh, good evening. My name is Tyson Chamberlain. I'm a designer uh, with Residential Resorts. We are a custom in-ground swimming pool builder um, and we are bringing to the tables uh, a fence design uh, for the homeowners, uh, Mike and Kathy Clark, who are here with us under the screen name of Owen. Tyson, could we just have your business address? I'm sorry for the record. Sure. 55 West Ledge Terrace in Torrington, 06790. Thank you so much. Yep. Um, I would be happy to share my screen too, if that makes it easier to just kind of run through our submission. Jim, is that okay? It's okay with me, it's unlocked. Okay, can you see our design layout here? Yes. Okay, um, so a uh, couple of things. Um, this was done prior to survey or surveying, just so based on my kind of field uh, dimensions. Um, but uh, like, for example, down here in this bottom right corner, the fence actually, in actuality, curves up a little bit like this. Um, uh, but we're, I think the intent, intent is to, to match the kind of existing um, footprint of the fence itself. Um, up, on, up at the north uh, boundary, uh, there's an existing chain link, link fence, and, and it was questionable whether we were even going to touch that at all or just leave it. Uh, but the homeowners, as I understand right now, do want to replace that as well. So that will be the, the cedar tongue and groove. We're talking about doing a cedar tongue and groove privacy fence that is a total of six feet tall. It's a five feet solid uh, vertical panels with a one foot uh, lattice topper. Um, the other thing to note up here is in this top right corner where the barn is, there's really only about four to six feet uh, to, the, to the property line. And we had just discovered that um, sort of, not just discovered, but we just sort of realized that we have uh, the property, uh, this property owns um, a strip of land behind this barn before the next property starts. So we're gonna add a gate right here as well, just so that uh, Mike and Kathy have access to the backside of their barn a little easier. Um, other than that, there's an eight foot gate here at the rear of the property. And up here at the front, is a little change to the existing layout of the fencing. Um, at the front of the house here, currently we do not have 11 feet here. We've got about six feet and we have a pathway that runs from, from the driveway here all the way back to the patio. And there's a current gate right here. Now existing is, is, a, is a, uh, a pretty, pretty old um, split rail fence. Um, but just to kind of open this up a little bit and so that we weren't creating a kind of tunnel tunnel like pathway between the house and the new fence, we moved the gate back to this corner of the house. I think it just opens it up nicer. Uh, we have a little bit wider area here so that we can fit a nice four foot gate and not have that tunnel between the house and the gate. Um, and then uh, these are some of the specs. Oh, let me turn this view again here. So basically, uh, this is what the fence looks like. Like I said, five foot um, with the one foot topper. Um, the the gate, uh, the gate that that we've talked about doing is actually different from both of these, and I want to bring this to your attention. So um, the homeowners would like to simply do a gate that's made out of uh, a panel, a regular panel. So instead of having a gate that's scooped up or scooped down, 
the gate itself is just going to look like the rest of the fencing. Um, and we're going to have a small um, pergola uh, above um, the four foot gate right at the corner of the house. And the posts will simply be chamfered like this here. And so with that being said, this is a very good uh, picture representation of how it would look, uh, both of these here. Just without the gate here, the gate is simply going to look like a regular fence panel. Any will questions? Be, yeah, will, there, will, there, will it be natural? Yes, yeah, cedar. Yeah. Um, oh, will it be stained, you mean? Correct. Um, that's a good question. Mike and Kathy, do you have thoughts on that? We, we were going to, we're going to put it in natural. We hadn't planned on staining it. Um, we, it didn't make that. To, we, we planned on leaving it unstained to weather naturally. Okay. Thank you. Any commissioners, uh, have any questions here? All right. So, um, oh. I'm just, I'm assuming that none of this can be seen from, um, oh my God, uh, Hart Street, or can it be seen through the next yard? Uh, can it be seen through the neighbor's yard? Yeah. I don't think any of it can be seen from Hart Street. We currently have a six foot stockade fence that runs um, from behind the- um, The barn. The, not from behind the barn, from behind Cliff and Gloria's house that goes all the way down Hart Street. There's an existing six foot stockade fence there. I'm sorry, I, I need you both to uh, identify yourself and the oh. name and address for the record, please. Sorry, Kathy Clark, 330 Main Street. Michael Clark, 330 Main Street. Thank you so much. And I'm just simply asking the question, just that most of this is not gonna be visible from a public way, it's just for the most part, the, the front, the part facing the front of the house, the street, and, and the sight lines down the sides are real tight also, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, okay. And thank you. Any other commissioners? Hearing none, uh, anyone from the public wishing to be in favor or against? Kim, I know I have a note to read in. I will Thank do you. that. I will do that now. Uh, this is from uh, Jeffrey Fisco. Good afternoon. I am writing in support of the application number 6040-21 for the installation of the six foot cedar fence around the rear yard at 330 Main Street. We reside at 336 Main Street and are in favor of the project, which also includes the replacement of a chain link fence on our south border. With the new, uh, with the new and improvement cedar fence, we have spoken with our with the owners at 330 Main Street regarding the project and fully support them. If there are any questions for this, please let me know, Jeffrey Fisk. All right, home office. Okay, uh, anybody else wish? I think, no, I think I already asked that, didn't I? Okay, with that, we'll move on to uh, the next. Thank you, thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, or you don't have to wait for the next part of the meeting, but uh, you're, you're welcome to do so. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Application number 6041-21 uh, for 55 Main Street. Main Street. Hello. Hello, Jeremy Barton, resident, hi, resident at 65 Main Street. Thanks for joining us. All right, so we are looking at uh, installing a wood picket fence along the southwest and northeast sides of the property to match existing fence. Pretty straightforward. Anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, just to be clear, it is a, a picket fence that had already been approved um, seven or eight years ago. We're, we're just moving it forward closer to the uh, front property. Okay. Any other commissioners have any questions? It was, it was a nice fence when it was good where it was. 
Thank you. It should should still be very nice. Yeah. Any other commissioners? Okay. Hearing none. Anyone wishing to speak in favor or against this application? Again, hearing none. Uh, we're going to move on. Thanks for joining us tonight. Application number 6042-21, 8 Wilcox Street. Mark, that's me today, I think. He's a firefighter and he is on duty. Okay, so we're going to hold off on that one? No, um, I told him I would handle it. Okay. Name and, I think, name and address for the record, please. <laughs> Kim Wolf down of Weathersfield. Thank you. Um, so, I think it's pretty. Oh. It's pretty. Um, it's pretty well listed in his application. I yeah. Think probably votable, but that's for you guys to discuss. It's basically it's a hundred feet across the entire back lot. And then 50 feet on this side. It's, yeah, he's just looking for a little bit of privacy. And you know, if the 50 feet are like from the house back to the uh, outbuilding and back, or? It's from the corner of the back, 50 feet out. Corner of the back of the house? Of the, house. Of the proposed addition that will be there. I, that's what it says in the application. Okay. But I assume that the proposed addition is what is standing now and that this is an old, um, this is an old plot plan. So I'm assuming that this proposed addition that's listed is actually there now. Um, so it's just a section of 50 feet. Okay. Any other commissioners? For a total, it says approximately 150 feet of fence together. So between the back, 100 feet. See my math skills? Pretty good, huh? Not bad. Better all. <laughs> right. I think everybody else is being pretty quiet on this. I assume that the good side of the fence will be facing the neighbors. We can stipulate that, or you can. I'm not stipulating anything. <laughs> You're the applicant. I am the applicant. <laughs> All right. Anything else, Bosick? No. Nope. Thank you. Anyone wishing to uh, speak in favor or against this application? Mark, do you want me to bring it up so that it's publicly visible? Yeah, why don't we do that real quick? Okay, hold on one second. Give it to Doug, he's quicker. Yeah, give it to Doug. <laughs> I got it. Give me a break. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so here's the location side yard, rear yard, panel. The inside of the this will probably be facing inside his yard mm -hmm. and it's all there is wood that's all we have that's it that's all we needed okay all, all right. right again i'll ask anyone we wishing to speak in favor or against hearing none we'll move on to application 6043-21 uh 89 harford avenue Good evening, everyone. Good evening. 
I'm Mark Deutsch with the Georgie Roofing and Siding, 33 Lancaster Drive in Beacon Falls. We also have a facility in Weathersfield on Arrow Road. I've been employed to Georgie 17 years. I go over 400 houses a year. And we're talking about uh, the property on Hartford. And you were talking about keeping the panels vertical before they meet the rake board. That is not impossible. Um, excuse wrong me, app. <laughs> Mark, we're on the wrong application, wrong app. This is, we're talking about 89 Hartford Avenue, not 55. I got it. I can't. Hold on. We're next. <laughs> we're coming up to you next. Hang in there. Let's see. 89 Hartford Ave. This is Douglas Howell, DBL. Doug. Doug was on. Where did he go? He's working on it. Hi there. Thanks. You have me? We got yeah. you, Doug. Hey, loud and clear. There we go. Hi, All right. So um, 89 Hartford Avenue. This is uh, Doug Lacella, DBL Contracting, 37 Belmont Street, Weathersfield, 06109. Uh, representing uh, Kevin and Amy DeVoe. So as you see in the application, um, we're looking to basically replace an existing deck and existing siding. They had a, a neighbor's tree fall in their house uh, last year. Uh, that's the, uh, the need for further work. Okay. Looking, just going through it again. Yeah, I have all, I think I submitted all the materials. Uh, they have vinyl siding on the house now. Um, I really had to work hard, but I talked them out of the green. Um, <laughs> so the. Uh, so we're going with indigo? Yeah, indigo is a gray. Um, I guess the key feature to the siding is going to be the trim package on it. Um, if, if I, I submitted some pictures and you can see the, um, when it was originally sided over, they, they, uh, tried to mimic the tapered portion of the siding, but the, uh, <coughs> a channel really stands proud of, of all the trim. Right. Um, so a few jobs we've done here in town that were approved with uh, vinyl siding. We, we use a technique to kind of bury the J channel. Um, and that's what I'm proposing here. Doug, a couple questions. Yep. Uh, I assume that the existing siding's coming off? Yes. Okay, and you're going to be going back to the wood siding that's under there somewhere. Yes. Um, and your proposed trim that you're showing in the application and you just showed on the screen of the brick mold. Is that what you're proposing? So it's, I use that as an example of how we buried the J channel. Yep. But yes, that's kind of what we're proposing is a more traditional. So what's, what's happening here is we're losing the taper. So if you go back to the original, um, how, how it is now, there you go. Um, you, you'll see they tried to follow the profile of the old tapered siding and there's a house, two houses east maybe um, on the corner, um, on, on the corner, Meg, uh, not Megan, um, Willard, mm -hmm. that has the, it was probably the original, it looked just like this um, and, and it has the original wood siding and everything. So you can see what it looked like and what they tried to recreate whenever they put this vinyl siding on, whenever it was. Probably sometime in the 70s or late or early 80s, I'd say. Um, yeah, so I think one of the things that they tried to do, and this is before people figured out how to bend that integral uh, catch the J channel into the molding. Um, so by going to with the brick mold, you you'll end up with a with a trim that's only about three inches wide or so. Um, 
it's probably closer to four and a half. I, I, it's, um, is it that wide? Did I, did I do, um, Kim, I don't know if I submitted something there that showed. Um, There's a photograph you submitted. Yeah. Um, I put measurements on there, I thought. I, I thought it was four and a half inches overall. So it'd be closer to what's at the bottom of the window right now. Okay. Yeah, no, what what we have doesn't have any measurements on it. Oh, okay. We just I have thought... a proposed aluminum trim style, which, yeah. Uh, okay, is there something written right on there? Proposal? Uh, no. Okay. No so measurements. It, it, it's it's gonna it's gonna end up being about four and a half inches total. I, you know, by the time we we put the J channel on and wrap the trim and fur out whatever we need to fur, it, it's going to end up somewhere around four and a half inches. Mm -hmm. This picture you're looking at now is a house on Garden Street, um, the uh, two family, and I think it's 193, we did several years ago. It, I was just giving that more as a um, concept of how we bury the J channel. Um, okay. And I don't think that 45 degree bend, you know, that that middle bend is going to be as is uh, pronounced. is pronounced. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But in, until we actually, you know, put the J on there and and, and form it, we, you know, again, I, I, that was more of a representation of what we're trying mm -hmm. to do. And the one thing that would be really good to do here, in keeping with the style of the house and what was originally there would be to keep the butt joints on the trim, on the top trim versus the side trim as opposed to miter. Uh, in, in terms of with the uh, trim coil, not doing a miter look, but just a, a squared off her butt. Yeah. Yep. yeah, easy enough, yeah. Can you, you can do the, that? The thing, we're, the thing we're losing here is is that kind of tapered look. Is those wings that hang out the side. Exactly. The taper of the casing, because the casing is actually tapered, and, and then the header piece yeah. as well. Uh, you, can't, you can't do that. What they have there right now is J-channel mm -hmm. forming that yeah. whole profile, mm -hmm. which I guess the intent was good to try to keep the profile as trim, but now you've got this uh, proud-looking J-channel. Uh, which I don't think does it justice. You know, you guys have learned a lot in the past 30 years about how to apply this stuff, both from the contractor's end and also from the manufacturer's end. So, and that's to, certainly to the good. Um, We want to talk about the deck. Or we, I'm sorry. I, I'm all done. Thank you. Okay. All right. And then the uh, the deck, I'm looking at uh, material. We, do we have a good view of from the street on what the, what the visibility of this deck will be? Mark, are you asking me or somebody on the commission? Uh, anybody, anybody. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting uh, there. I'll speak. <laughs> I, okay. know that, I know that was directed at me. I'm getting there. Hi, <laughs> Kim. But um, Doug, so, feel free to so, weigh in. Okay, so there's very little um, view of the deck whatsoever from, from anywhere, uh, whether it's Willard, Hartford Avenue. Um, the, the one major change that the deck is existing we're proposing the same materials. Um, it, the only change is I want to move the stairs to the driveway side. So right now the stairs, um, okay, that's a great view right there. Oh, back there, Kim, one shot back, a little zoomed in there, yeah. Um, so the stairs right now, um, geez, I can't even remember now. The, the stairs go more towards the backyard um, 
Oh, no, no. Actually, the stairs come out towards the driveway. Okay, so there's a mud room in the back of the house, and the stairs come out towards the driveway. Okay. On that side of the house. We want to reconfigure the stairs to go straight down towards the backyard. So if you zoomed into that picture at all, I don't know if you'd catch the very end of the stairs kind of sticking out past the house. Yeah, you have very, a drawing, Doug, that shows it with the old relocate. Yeah. Yeah, it shows it pretty good. Yeah, it, it's hugging the foundation of the house is what you're proposing, right? It, it really is, yeah. Yeah, so the old line went see. straight out. Right, you can't come out any further because the driveway like parallel to it. Yeah, right, right. But instead of coming out straight towards the driveway, their intent was to have the de the stairs go towards the backyard so they can because um, they have some fencing back there to keep their dogs in and that sort of thing. That drawing there. There you go. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. So so the existing stairs come pretty much even the last step even with the foundation on the driveway side and we just want to you know move them actually they'll probably be less visible if anything. Um, same thing pressure treated lumber. Um, they had a early version of the Trex decking on there. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we're going to use, you know, uh, timber tech or Azek, which is one and the same now in a, in a slate gray, which is very common. Um, it'd be a very traditional handrail. Uh, that's pretty much what they have now, a two by two PT baluster. Um, and it will do a, um, a decking board for a top rail, kind of a drink rail, if you will. And then the two by two spindles, square. The two by two, yeah, the two by two balusters with three and a half inch spacing, square. Um, there'll be a four by four post every, you know, it, depending on the layout, anywhere from six to eight feet spacing. Okay. Pretty detailed out there. Any any other commissioners have any questions? All right, Doug, anything else for us? Uh, no, that's it at this time. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. I'm going to ask at this point if there's uh, anyone in favor or against this, uh, this application. All right, hearing none, we're going to move on to uh, 227 Garden Street. I'm sorry, Mark, I missed it by one. We got one more before you come on. Hang in there. <laughs> 227 Garden Street. Hi, my name is Isabel Jovacchini. I'm a resident at 227. I'm the owner of 227 Garden Street. Um, Thank you we, for joining us. No problem. Um, we want to put a five foot stockade cedar fence around our rear yard. Um, pretty much. I uh, don't know how much more detail you need. It would not be stained, so it'd be just left as wood. Um, right now, there's the fence along the back, but nothing on the side. Um, so would you butt up against that? or? Yes, and we would need to add to it a little bit as the back fence is for the back neighbor. And it doesn't go all the way across the property line. Okay. I see um, you've given us a nice little uh, drawing on the plot plan. So it'll start from uh, the back of the house and come back and return to the house. Yes. And go around the garage. Mm hmm Right. And you'll put the nice facing side facing the neighbors. Yes. All right. Fantastic. Will you be painting it or staining it? No, we're going to leave it natural. Fantastic. Any other commissions and any other questions? Quiet group tonight. It's a good plot plan. I just question, uh, again, just for the record, the, your gates. Will there be gates? Yeah, there will be one gate um, on the, I don't know how to describe like which side it is. 
based so on it'd this. probably be the left side from the garage to the house part yeah. that section it would that be line. there yes yeah because on the driveway side so you can yeah. like yeah and a, a four foot eight foot section how large is the gate sorry i'm asking my husband <laughs> it's either four or eight four foot gate that's standard yeah yeah all right. Is it going to be big enough to get the rider mower back there? <laughs> we don't have a rider mower, so luckily right. we'll be okay. <laughs> okay, just checking. Just checking. All right. I don't have any more questions. Any other commissioners? No? Pretty straightforward. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank Isabel. you. Uh, anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against this application? All right, if we'll move on to, uh, we're moving on to 360 Hartford Avenue. Mark, you still with us? Yes, I am. Good evening, you all. No, not him yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> not me yet. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. Is it no, me? Am not... I up? No, Mr. and Mrs. Donahue are on. Okay, thank you. I'll sign off here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. and Mrs. 360 Hartford Avenue. <laughs> sorry, Bill. You gotta unmute Bill. <laughs> Trying, I asked him. Oh, can you hear me now? We can. Okay, uh, I'm Bill Donahue. I live at 360 Hartford Avenue. Uh, we've been living here since 1976. In 1993-4, we put in the fence. Um, it's wall pole and it's cedar. And uh, it lasted until now with a lot of help from friends and neighbors rebuilding it. Uh, we'd like to remove it and replace it with another wall pole fence um, that's same, same similar, design. same design, same uh, size with a few exceptions. The first exception is it's Azac as opposed to uh, cedar. Um, the next exception is that the corner on the south side will be a curve. Um, this is as a result of a survey that we did in 2000, which indicated that we were uh, about 16 inches, 17 inches on our neighbor's property. Um, so the curve allows us to uh, both lower the fence and also eliminate uh, the encroachment on our neighbor to the south. Uh, we're asking for the potential to add another 16 feet um, on the south border. And this is related to an ongoing saga that we have with a 130, 140 year old copper beech tree, uh, which is in the process of uh, uh, I guess it's senior age, um, and we're doing everything we can to keep it alive, but we anticipate that at some point we may have to, other than uh, bringing in a 90-foot crane to take a little section of it off recently, uh, that we may have to uh, do more serious uh, removal of the tree. So we're anticipating when that happens, uh, there's some other landscaping that would have to be removed and a fence added. Um, the design is basically a six foot high with a four foot um, and uh, tongue and groove. And on top of that, a two and a half inch lattice that's two feet high. Uh, so it's very similar to the photographs that we included. And that's why we showed the photographs. It's identical, it's identical to what we showed at least uh, the first X number of feet. We have quite a bit of detail here. Any commissioners have any questions? Uh, just to confirm with Mr. Donahue, in the product description, it describes the uh, all factory, all material factory pre-finished with two coats of paint. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, I did give uh, samples of three products uh, to Kim. Um, yeah. I don't know whether she has them with her or whether any of you have seen them, but they are the Azac that's uh, painted with uh, Benjamin Moore, excuse me, Sherwin-Williams paint. Uh, yeah, they were sitting on her porch, we saw them. Okay. 
that's all I have. That's all you have? Nobody else? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, I'm going to ask at this point, is there anybody in favor or against this application that would like to speak? I'm hearing none. Uh, we will move on to uh, 54 Garden Street, application 6046-21. Fifty-four. I'm sorry. Fifty-four Center Street. Fifth. Look at the city. Oh no. Do we have anyone? Yep. iPad Hello? number five. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Name and address for the record, please. Joe Joseph Urchwoli. 54 Center Street, Weathersfield. Thanks for joining us tonight. Welcome. All right, so your application to replace front railings and steps with fiber on armor, armor guard. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> I'm seeing my, our friends over in Hartford Road. Um, anything you'd like to add to the application? Uh, no, we're just uh, first timers here. Uh, oh. it's, an old, it's an old place, uh, mm. about a hundred years old. And um, all we the front steps are wood, and they're pretty, pretty shot. Um, good, you know. If you leave them alone, they'll I'm sure be a safety hazard, which we don't want. And um, basically, I gave. I, I, I'm on low battery. I hope you still can can hear me. We can, uh, yes. Um, basically, very simple. We just wanted to uh, replace the rails, the steps. The steps will go from uh, the current. I think we have one, two, three, three steps to, to four steps. So they'll extend out from the house to about 41 inches or so. Uh, the materials that was, uh, we're looking at were all from um, Home Depot, and I left that material with uh, Kim. Yep, we have that on the application. Pressure treated stair strings, seven of them. Uh, treads, composite treks, uh, right. risers, PVC, ASIC white. Right. And then so basically, uh, it'll be gray and white. Basic, the look is, I mean, the, the color combinations will be uh, different now that the steps are all gray, uh, including the risers. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be changing that to gray steps with white risers. Uh, we'll be taking off the, um, the railing is very old, wobbly iron uh, painted black, and that'll be replaced as you can see by um, the materials that we we recommend we were recommended. Um, the uh, let's see. I think that's pretty much it. We're trying to uh, maintain the same look as the railing that does go around the porch, uh, the front porch, so that it it has somewhat continuity as close as we could get with the material that we chose. Okay. Is the railing material the, um, the uh, is it is that hollow material or is it solid material? I believe it's, I believe at least for the post, for the, uh, the you know, the, the rail at the bottom, not the rail, but the, where, where the rails connected on the first landing on the first step uh, that I believe is hollow. Uh, the other material I'm not sure of, but um, it does. It, it'll be it'll be married in the same way that uh, it'll look very much the same. I believe. Would you um, would you be painting that? No, 
there will, will material is uh, is weather weather well, I wouldn't say weather proof but uh, it it does stand up to weather and uh, I believe not uh, that I'm sure that none of it has to be painted. Let's see, all right. Um, does any any of the commissioners have any commission any questions? No. I mean, I know some of the commissioners have a have a tough time with with these um, these hollow. Uh, what would yeah these hollow. Uh, PVC pieces. I mean, I think I'd, me personally, I'd prefer to see, you know, a solid pressure treated piece uh, of wood that, um, that could be painted white to match. Um, but that's just one commissioner's opinion. I don't know if anybody else wanted to weigh in. Actually, I think if that were the case, it would stand out more like, a, I wouldn't say a sore thumb, but it would be obvious that it's uh, painted and the rest isn't. Go. Let's see. Uh, Joe, I have a question. Um, the uh, railing system down below. There is uh, stuff submitted from Fibron, and the my question is: Which railing style are you using? Deluxe, classic, Regency, or Enclave? Yeah, I, I'm afraid I don't have that. I don't have that information in front of me. You submitted to to the town, though. Yeah, I did. Uh, it, there was a tear sheet from uh, from Home Depot, and uh, as I said, it, the 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 one that's pictured because I don't know that they have pictures of all of the styles you mentioned. Well, actually, they do. They do. <laughs> um, I, I'm really sorry. My pad. I'm using my wife's iPad, and it's down to 10% battery, so I, I can't really see. Um, it would it would uh, replicate or, or or try to replicate as close as possible to the style that's already on the porch, on the porch railing. Yeah. And it's um, it's very plain. It doesn't have any fancy grooves or doodads or swirls on it, as far as I know. Our neighbors uh, up the street have very similar. They have recently done on the same side of our street. Uh, probably, I'm not sure if it would of the number of the house, but. Um, in the neighborhood, I've seen this style several times, and it's not like uh, it's. If you were going to call it a, a Grecian column, it would probably fall under a Doric. Joe, will you be doing the work yourself, or do you have a contractor? No, I hope to do it myself. Okay. Any other commissioners? All right, hearing none, we will move on. Joe, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you, have a good night. Can you do the same? All right, uh, I'm gonna ask if any one from the public is wishing to speak in favor or against this application. Hearing none, we'll move on to application 6047-21, Sixth Harmon Place. How are you doing? Good. Name and address for the record? Arnold Divino, Sixth Hubbard Place in Weathersfield, Connecticut. Thanks for hanging in there with us. No problem. Tell us about your application. All right, so I'm looking to do a red cedar three foot fence on the east side of my property. Wendy? Um, Wendy. And uh, the, the, it's gonna be un, it's going to be natural red cedar, not gonna stain it or paint it. Okay. Um, the, one, the one caveat we are gonna do is put a two to three inch um, a wire 
um, I guess, fence or inside it, inside the um, cedar thing to line it because I do have uh, a couple of dogs. Okay. So will you be doing that, uh, the dark green? I believe Wire it's or silver. black um, ah. by Hartford um, Fence Company from Chris, Chris from Hartford Fence Company. Okay. And we have a plot plan. Yep. Marked out. So 10 foot and then 104 foot. I'm sorry, the lighting in here is bad. Is there, are there gates? So there's gonna be two gates in the front and then where the deck is. So I wanna block off that section. Okay. That's it. How are the gates going to look? Uh, if you see the picture, um, it's got like the little X. If you see that little picture um, um, from the Red Cedar, it'll look like that. And you, you'll be able to frame the green or the black wire fencing around that as well? Yes. That's what he says. <laughs> yeah, he's going to probably need some bottoms and tops, I would think, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Any commissioners want to uh, ask any questions? Yeah, hey, Arnold. Uh, so if I, I'm looking at your plot plan, you have the run in the front. And then is that, there's another section then from your deck. There's this going to be like a strip of grass. Is that? I'm sorry. Okay. So you have the run in the front and mm -hmm. there's a gate there. Mm -hmm. And then where your deck you mentioned, and that looks like that's a run. So you have a, a strip of land there in between the two sections? Yes. And that's to keep the dogs back behind, but so how long the, is that? Is that about 10 feet too or, or 20? So there's gonna be, from the deck to the front of the house, there's gonna be basically a gated section of privacy where the dogs can't get out. And then there's gonna be a run from the deck to the back of the yard and then it's going to go over a little bit because there's a fence. My neighbor behind me's fence is there. So it's going to butt up to his fence. I see that. I'm talking about the front of the house. So you have your house. Mm -hmm. You have the fence will extend from that over. Mm -hmm. And then there's a strip of land there. That's like a buffer, I guess. And then another fence right by, you know, within 10 feet or 20 feet of that. Or do you see your drawing there that you have? You have the driveway to the left, the house. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about what you're thinking was on that? What? I'm not understanding you. I'm sorry, Chris. <laughs> if, if, if you take a look at the drawing, you, you yeah. see the drawing in front of you? Yeah, I'm looking at it. Okay, how come that, I, I just don't, obviously you don't want the dogs to go up to the front of the house. You, you're you blocking them. You, you have two rows of fence there within almost 10 to 20 feet of each other. Is that right? Or It's a little, yeah. um, so what? it's, I don't know if it's that wide is what um um oh, so that's just like an enclosure then kind yeah, of yeah it's an enclosure so all right my my plan is from the deck to the front of the house is an enclosure and then the deck is then the fence is gonna go just go across the back of the property on the east side and then butt over a little bit but there's gonna basically be a section on the side of the house um, from the deck to the front of the house where um, the dogs can be in enclosed. Like a dog. It's going to be enclosed. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know what that was yet. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other commissioners? I can't see anybody, so I'm going to guess no. We're good. Okay. All right. Thank you for joining us tonight. And I'm going to go to uh, our last application of the night, 6048-21, uh, uh, 55 Hartford Avenue. Mark, evening, still with everyone. us? Hello. Yes, I'm here. And uh, I'll tell you, I'm 63 years old, 17 years at the Georgie, 400, 500 homes a year. And I just love your passion. This is my first uh, meeting like this in my life. And your passion, your commitment, your thoughts are 
it's mind blowing. So it's a good Thank thing. You. And uh, past my bedtime, that. but here I am. <laughs> and we're the Georgie Roofing Siding, and we're in Beacon Falls at 33 Lancaster Drive. We also have a facility in Weathersfield off of Arrow Road. And the Cedar Impressions installed with proposed, keeping the same style as uh, the panel stopping short of the rake boards. That's not going to happen with uh, Cedar Impressions double seven inch. It's it's uh, not it's not possible. And uh, so that's that. And Cedar Impressions is a great product. Uh, and you know I'm very proud to work for DeGiorgi. The job will you know attention to detail will be as good as it can get. All right. Any commissioners? I, I had suggested it. Uh, oops, sorry. Go ahead. I go ahead. But, yep. Yeah, uh, Peyton Clancy, 55 Hartford Ave. Um, so I was curious about the, the cutouts as well um, after our first meeting. So I consulted with an architect just to find out the reason they're done that way. And um, He's, so an architect, architectural historian, basically had told me that uh, these cutouts are a result of a technical or performance issues. Historically painted wood shingles, when cut to a pointed end, could not be nailed near the pointed end for fear of splitting the shingle. If left as a pointed end without nailing during time, the pointed end would often warp or break due to weather exposure. So uh, wood shingle contractors devised a method of cutting the pointed ends, creating what some call cutouts. This method of cutting wooden shingles was devised, was devised not for aesthetic reasons, but out of necessity to ensure proper like wood shingle insulation. So it wasn't done aesthetically, like I know a couple of the commissioners had mentioned, and uh, I was just curious myself. So I uh, consulted with an architect and just wanted to throw that out there, um, seeing, seeing as it can't be done. Um, and I also consulted with two other uh, vinyl siding companies just to double check. And they also said that uh, there's no way with vinyl we can mimic this look. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that insight. Yeah, and we kind of, uh, it, when we suggested with the stipulation on it, it maybe the thought was that the applicant would reconsider to keep that uh, in, in, in a shake uh, style. But um, I appreciate the research uh, that they did as well. And that information, we kind of figured that. All right, any other commissioners? No, uh, Peyton, Mark, anything else you want to share with us? Actually, um, I oh, have- Sorry. Sure. What I wanted to say is that I, uh, first of all, appreciated the comments of the contractor. Uh, and I have no doubt that given the number of projects they do, that this project so visible would be executed uh, completely in accordance with the limits of the material used. Uh, I would say, however, though, that it's precisely because of the limits of wood uh, that the clipped corners exist. And that's part of what reveals that you have a real wood uh, siding as opposed to um, the cedar impressions. Uh, it really depends on where you live, but. You know, for instance, on Cape Cod, despite all the weather that they face, houses are routinely resided in cedar shingles. Um, and it's considered uh, a periodic uh, upgrade. Uh, over the years, they get cleaned, they get painted, they get uh, washed, and eventually uh, they get replaced. Um, I think that. As, as nice as Cedar Impressions is, it really replicates the look of Cedar Impressions, which is to say, um, it looks like good vinyl siding. It really doesn't replicate the look of wood, uh, except on a very quick glance. 
and that house is close to the street on a bend. And so it is visible. At the same time, uh, you know, I'm open to using materials that replicate the look of the existing. And up until now, we haven't really had a choice that uh, brings us all the way there. Um, so I'm, I'm not necessarily uh, against voting uh, or approving this siding here, but it really is a compromise that um, is better than a lot of other vinyl uh, applications, uh, but it really um, doesn't truly replicate what wood siding uh, can do for a house. Um, and so my request is that homeowners really consider uh, long and hard um, the choice uh, to go this route because of course, once it's made, um, there's almost never any turning back. So um, I, again, uh, appreciate that a good contractor has been selected who will give us the best cedar impressions outcome we could have. Um, and um, again, uh, I just wanted to say that the research here kind of proves the point uh, that was being made at that time, that if we do use cedar impressions here, uh, as good as it is, we are making a compromise uh, and we have to decide if it's one that uh, substantially harms the district or if it's one that again is something worth looking at. Uh, we've used it on properties kind of this size and this age a number of times. Uh, we used it right around the corner on Megat Park and what it tends to do a good job of is replicating the look of a mid-century cape or ranch. Uh, it, and, and in some ways, I guess that's uh, accept its greatest uh, chance at acceptableness because um, it looks of its era uh, rather than something uh, earlier than that. Um, so there you go. Yeah. Anyone else? Hearing none, we will uh, we'll move on. I'm gonna make, uh, can I have a motion to uh, close the public hearing? So moved. Can I have a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Hey, Get everybody I gotta to say it again. Thank you all for having the passion that you have. And uh, in my experience in my life and the, the exposure I've had, it's, it's incredible that you people spend the time and the brain power to, to do all this. It's exceptional, You're exceptional people. Thank you. We try to keep the district strong. Appreciate it. All right, Mark, have a great night. Thanks for joining us. All right. Take care. Thank you. All right, so uh, we have the, uh, we're open, we've opened the public meeting. So we'll start with application 6029-21, uh, Nova Group, LLC, seeking to replace eight Anderson window, 400 series double hung windows, and uh, also install an eight by 16 wood deck for the Anderson signing patio door at uh, 26 Wilcox Street. And I have a motion. If somebody's gonna make a motion, I'm not voting, I guess Kathleen is. Uh, the one step I would like to see is that the railing shall match the front porch in size and style. And, okay. before, the, and before the motion is made, could I also ask, uh, just to confirm, uh, what kind of color screen was requested and what size? I don't remember if this was discussed in the public meet, uh, public meet hearing. It, it was earlier. It was not. Would you like to step that? Uh, yeah, I would suggest that the windows are going to be white, that the screens be silver uh, and not black, uh, and that they be half screens in uh, any event. Uh, if the windows are going to be a dark color, 
of course, then I would uh, not necessitate the silver. Yeah, the uh, paper, it says white with white sash. Um, Thank you. Yeah, that does dug on the on the, one of the, uh, the original Anderson windows. Screens Great. are gonna be uh, aluminum white. And keep in Both mind- screen aluminum, sorry. Yeah. I think that's the frame and- uh, Yes, uh, there's not, the, not really, the actual mesh, yeah. Sure. Well, it does say, real, go ahead. I was just gonna say there's a real advantage to being able to see the bare glass uh, at all times of the year on at least half the window, at least in my opinion. It says insect screen material aluminum. And that's probably a silver. Uh, yes, that's gonna be silver, yeah, I would imagine. Right. I'm sorry, and I interrupted Doug, Bostic. Doug, since you're three quarters of the way there, are you gonna make the motion? <laughs> I'm not voting, uh, so I can't make it either, sorry. So not moved. Well, we need Thank five, you, right? Thank you, Claire. Kathleen is voting for dog. And Vasek's voting then. I guess I'm, Kathleen, yeah. do you want to second that? I'll second it. Thank okay. you, Kathleen. Thank you. So all right. did we get all the stipulations in there? No, we haven't. Keep in mind that when this is, the application is submitted for the windows on the first floor, not the second floor. Mm -hmm. Last time when we discussed this, we asked the applicants to consider doing two stories at a time on a face. Oh, that's right. We Thank could you. stipulate the windows are approved for the whole house. So the application is not for the whole house. The if we stip it, that doesn't mean they have to do it. Right. Hmm. Hmm. Well, if we don't, uh, if any any stipulation we make can always be incompletely adhered to as long as they don't make a change to a part of the project. Um, so I think that um, the, I, I, I think that we'd like to go on the record of uh, indicating we'd rather see a side of the house done rather than all of the windows on one floor, uh, unless the time period between the first floor and the second floor is going to be less than a year. What we had discussed last time was, do we want to step one side of the house and, and not, allow it, not allow it all to be on the first floor, but say do the front facade or the et cetera. That's the what we talked thing, about last time. You yeah. were right, the, the hard thing about that, in my opinion, is that, uh, you know, typically you're shutting down one room at a time uh, uh, or one floor at a time for construction. And I would be able to live with the inconsistency, but not indefinitely. And I guess that's kind of, uh, 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 I know. Replacing yeah. windows going in a day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, replacements are pop. Yeah, they go quick. Replacements aren't much different than vacuuming your house. <laughs> All right. I would draw. When was the I last time before. you vacuumed your house? Uh, you actually, vacuumed it. Okay. We're still only on the first application. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Sorry. The, the it's problem, so late. I'm losing focus already. Come on. All right. The problem with this one with the facade, you have almost three facades to, to choose yeah. one because of the corner lot, the, the dead end. I, I mean, which facade do you pick? I would propose you? this. I would propose that we approve the deck, approve the sliding doors, approve the trim around the deck and all that, and deny without prejudice the windows. All right, well, let's have a discussion on that. With, 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 how with does the, everybody feel about that? With basically, and with Kim, um, Kim should uh, contact the applicant, obviously, and tell her that our preference is to see once, if they can't do the whole house, to do one side at a time. I'm sorry, can I chime in for a second? I'm no, I'm sorry, that he can't hear. No, okay. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. No problem. Um, I mean, again, I, I'm not opposed to stipulating 
you know, that we approve the same window on the whole house. If they need to come back for an amendment they, to make any changes, they want to do a side, they want to do a floor. Okay. I'm, I'm cool. I just threw that out there. Yeah. I think that this, um, you know, because I don't think anybody has a problem with the windows. We're stipulating screens. We're, you know, yep. I'm, I'm, I'm trying not, I'm not trying to speak for everybody. It sounds like there's a consensus that uh, the windows are okay. We're okay with the deck, the sliders. If we approve them for the whole house, move it along. I, I agree with you, Mark. And uh, I'd rather see the, um, the message sent that we approve them for the house and if they want to come back to us and ask for a modification for something less than the house, they can uh, come back and do that. Okay. The, pres the presumption is going to be that the whole house will be done. And if they want to come back and present something else, us different uh, as a modification, then we can. And I think that would help uh, allow the project to go forward, uh, but also allow a little bit of fine tuning if necessary. So the scenario plays out that we approve these windows for the whole house. Uh, they have a year to complete it and are supposed to come back and ask for the extension. So what amendment were you talking about, Doug? They would come back, you know, they don't have the money to oh, if they do the wanna, second. If, correct. If they want to say that they definitely can't do the whole house in one year and they want to talk to us up front rather than later, they can do that. Well, but, let's assume that let's, let's just take a scenario where they that isn't the case the year goes by they haven't put the second story in or, or the other windows what, what happens then then they wouldn't be in compliance so that's why they should come back to see us um on an amendment if they're going to do something less than the approval within the year Except that I think they already asked for what they can do and what they intend to do. And I think that's probably what we should vote on. And if they don't like it, they can try to do something else. It's Kim. Look, can I just interject for one second? Please. There that would be times, great. There are times that people um, have plans to do the whole house, but they don't put it on their application. They think they're going to do it in stages. Um, so I think you're, I'm just, I'm not saying that that's the case with this instance, but it does happen a lot where they have a plan to do a part, a part now and a part later. Um, and then they'll reapply for the second part, but it's happened to us a few times. So I think that's why you guys usually do the whole house just so that it's there for their ability to do the whole house if they so choose to. I think it has a tendency, Kathleen, to kind yeah. of uh, move them in the direction of that. And in those circumstances, fortunately, less it's the minority of, of situations where there's an incomplete work. If anything, we have uh, more cases where they've gone too far, not too short. <laughs> okay, thank you, I agree. All right, Bye. so we need to... Uh... Taylor, back the, uh, I, I guess we do the uh, stipulate or the uh, motion, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, just let's make sure that Vasek's list is uh, part of it. And, and just to be clear here, in terms of the number of people, is, is uh, don't we have just five, even with Vasek voting fully? If, or am I counting wrong? Doug, if you're voting, I'm not. I'm not voting. If you're not um, voting, then we have five and you're hanging in there. Great, perfect. So you're a full voter, go ahead, step okay. away. So based on Kim's recommendation, if I understood it right, is the only stipulation is that the railing shall match the front porch in size and style. And we can say specifically that the windows are approved for the entire house. Correct. And, and is, that what, is that what Kim is suggesting? Yes. Yes. Okay, stipula stipulation number two, Anderson 400 series, 
windows shall be used in the entire house with grill patterns to match the existing. Thank Perfect. you, Bossy. And Kathleen, do we still have your second? Yes, I second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes with stipulations. Application number 6034-21, Cynthia Brown seeking to replace the garage door. Can I have a motion? I propose we leave this on the table. Second. Discussion? Uh, Mr. Evian gave us some great pictures. Uh, the applicant does not have a pressing deadline at this particular point in time. Let's give this a little bit more time. I'm okay with that. Lasik, did you have anything else you wanted to share? No, I think I'm, I've been disappointed in both doors that have been submitted so far. So uh, okay, let's give it a third try. Third time, maybe it's a charm, Vasek. Let's hope Anyone so. else? Hearing none, I'll call for the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay, all opposed? Hearing none, motion is tabled. Application number 6038-21, Gove Restoration. Can I have a motion? I'll this motion. is uh, 52 Garden Street. Yep. With I make a motion to approve with, two, uh, with the two stipulations that aren't 100% clear in the application is that the color shall be cadet gray and that the windows installed shall be aluminum clad. I'll second. And um, actually, I'm really looking forward to this application in that I'm really hoping that at some point, this will be the tail wagging the dog where these windows will be installed in the rest of the house when they get rid of the cheap vinyl that's in there now. Very good point. Yep. I was, um, I was really impressed with the, uh, the low profile of this, uh, this window and the way it kind of sits flush into the front of the house. Um, I, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of interested to see how this works out. I, 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 I feel pretty good about it. I would say that other than the lower depth of the mountains that exist on a simulated bite window as opposed to uh, a traditional wood win single pane wood window is that these are gonna do a very good job replicating what's there, both in size and in style. Agreed. No, I, I do want to say I thought, um, I thought Doug's point was well taken, um, that from a decision perspective from the, for the homeowner, are you going to use this space as living space, as four year round space in which you need tight energy efficient blah, blah windows? Or is this a porch that you're gonna walk through and get into the house? And so there, therefore the standard of the kind of window that you need is different. And I, I just wanna say, Doc, thank you for making that point. It was a good point. If yeah. these were windows that were going into a year round house, it'd be a very different need than what we have, I think, for just a porch. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Doc, for making that point. Thank you, Claire. Any other questions? I, I'd like to jump on that too. And, and actually the picture he sent, I don't know what he did this weekend. It was pretty hot out there, but he, he did show some good photos for us. And whether they use it as year round, it's going to strike as a year round. It's going to look like one with that upgraded windows, but I'm excited to see it. The only other thing I would add is um, I have to admit, I was influenced by the same uh, motivation that Bostic stated although I wouldn't have described it exactly the same way the existing, but I do think that these win this window would be an improvement on the whole house. So there you go. Thank you. You wouldn't have called them cheap windows, is that? No, we don't use that word. It's an unacceptable word. Only boss Someone gets away with that. All right, Mark, call the vote. I am calling the vote. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Do we have one opposed? No. 
for just for the record? No? We're all in favor. Okay. And the motion passes. Uh, approved as uh, approved with stipulations. All right, let me bring my place back here. Um, application 6040-21, uh, Residential Resorts LLC, uh, install six foot cedar fencing, uh, 330 Main Street. Can I have a motion? Approved is submitted. Second. It's a very nice fence, uh, not visible from Hart Street, drive it all the time. And certainly appropriate for the house. Agreed. And you can see the lattice there. on top is a nice touch. Yeah, I like sure. that. It's a little friendly. And we have that at the corner of um, Willard and Hartford Avenue now. And it, uh, it's made for a nice uh, installation there, even though it's on a sloping ground. All right. Any other comments? I'll call the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes as submitted. Okay, application number 6041-21, 55 Main Street. Make a motion. I have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. I'll second. You know, again, they've done a great job in that home. Uh, nice corner, nice bar. This will look good. Basically, it's the same fence. It's just getting moved. Correct. Yeah. No changes. All right. Good. Let's call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes as submitted. Moving on to application 6042-21, 8 Wilcox Street. I'd like to make a motion to approve with the stipulation that the good side of the fence shall face out. Second. Uh, the locations are called out on the uh, plot plan in the application. It's a very nice fence that they're proposing. I love their house, but uh, yep, I think it will be, it will work very well. I agree. I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion uh, approves with is approved with stipulations. Uh, let's see. Next up, 6043-21, 89 Hartford Avenue. Can I I'll make a motion to oh, oh, yeah. make a motion to approve as submitted? How about a whole bunch of steps? I was hoping you'd step up. <laughs> Stipulation number one, all fenestration trim shall be approximately four inches wide and be butt joined. Number two, corner trim shall be at least four inches wide and incorporate uh, the J channel. Oh, sorry, skip that part about incorporating J channel. Step three, all trim shall incorporate J, J channel into the trim. And number four, stairs shall be relocated to face the rear yard. I was submitted, but yeah. Yeah, it, it wasn't clear on the drawing in that the stairs were drawn very nicely going down towards the driveway and the little dotted line was there. No, I just, that makes sense. I second that. Any other discussion? Uh, you know, Vinyl siding getting replaced with vinyl siding. I find it amusing. Right. Right. I think enough said. Um, Austin, you have the, the first on that? The first step? No, no, do you, no. no. Do, are you making the motion? First step. Well, yeah, I, motion. I would do mine. Okay. okay. I guess I am then. And Chris seconded it. started the discussion. Kim, can I call the vote? Can we just run through the steps again one more time, please? Sure. Fenestration trim shall be approximately four inches wide and be butt joined. Number two, corner trim shall be at least four inches wide. Number three, all trim shall incorporate J channel into the trim. 
Number four, stairs shall be relocated to face rear yard. Thank you. I can send you a copy of it if you want. I got it. Okay. okay. Thanks. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes with stipulations. Application 6044-21, uh, five inch cedar fence, rear yard of 227 Garden Street. I'll make sure to approve is submitted with the stipulation that the fence gate shall be on the south side, driveway side. And also that the um, stipulation would be that the uh, horizontal rails or the, the good side is facing out the rails on the inside. There you go. Second? I'll second. Any discussion? Nice, nice fence, uh, appropriate for the uh, area, uh, for the district. And um, I agree, Chris. Eighth fence of the day. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes with the stipulations. All right, application 6045-21, 360 Hartford Avenue. May I have a motion? Approve as submitted. Second. Discussion? I think Chris Devani, who's come in with a plastic fence, which overall would tend to make me reconsider. However, the fact that it's being painted uh, will should make it virtually indistinguishable from a wood fence. Certainly the style of the fence works very well with the property as well as the adjoining properties. Yeah, we, we talk about plastic uh, in some of the AZAC becoming, a, th this is a true solid piece of uh, still PVC, but, and as Vasek said, painted, it, it doesn't represent uh, a plastic fence. Great okay. style as well. Any other discussion? I'll call the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes as submitted. Somebody should note that Claire voted for plastic fence. Mm -hmm. Painted, so did you, boss. So it's did on you. It's on record. <laughs> Application number 6046-21 to Joseph, um, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna make, pretend I can say that. 54 Center Street, um, can I have a motion? I'd like to table this. I will um, second that. We're not clear on which railing style we're using. Uh, I also would like Kim to uh, communicate with the applicant and saying that basically if they're proposing to use a plastic railing system, it should be painted. Obviously, Sherwin Williams has uh, vinyl safe paints and I'm sure other manufacturers do too. Agreed. Any other comments, questions, thoughts? Okay, I'll call the vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. The motion to table is approved. Um, application 6047-21, 6 Hubbard Place. Another, uh, another fence. With Motion this. to approve. Second. Any comments? It's a cedar split rail fence. It's appropriate. Yeah. No, nobody has an issue with the wire, the little wire fencing being attached to it. It's it's black. It will blend into the background. Okay. Uh, is it absolutely invisible? No. Is no. it minimal impact? Yes. Okay. I'll call the vote. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Motion passes as submitted. 
Uh, application 6048-21, 55 Hartford Avenue. Can I have a motion? Well, I make a motion to deny. I'll second, I'll second. that. All right, discussion? You know, I, I, I think we've had the discussion. I think we had the discussion last time. I think we discussed it some before. Um, we're losing the detail of wood. Um, and I think just as, for instance, when a house has corner boards, I mean, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm losing. It's, it's getting late for me. Um, Go ahead, Basik, you want to talk. I can just look at your face. You talk. I mean, basically. It's been too many years of us meeting this way, honey. I'm just telling there's, you. There's some very interesting details on this house that are going to go away if it gets wrapped. Uh, certainly the little trimmed uh, shingles are one of them. Uh, the soffit material on that little bit of soffit that's over the front windows is going to change and it's it's a lovely house and I just would hate to I'm not going to be sitting here in 20 years but I would hate to have somebody else have to sit here and say oh we're going to be changing the vinyl siding on this because gray is just so out of the wrong color now or green as the case may be um, yeah, I think this is a house that is that should stay wood, and there is truly no reason why it it needs change. Okay, Kathleen, yeah, I, I think um, it comes down to what's our job. You know, I mean, where where do we draw those lines of what we preserve and um, it's not just that a house is, is big and fancy, it's the whole neighborhood and trying to keep that integrity. Yeah. I, I totally agree. I, I think it is, uh, you know, keeping the district strong, as you said earlier, and um, that's what we're trying to do. And oh I my God, it's our new tagline. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I, it, this is a little, a little gem. And we should treat it as such. And, you know, the other thing that I think should be considered is that this house is a lot older at this point than the Hubbard houses were when this district was established. And hmm. we all recognize Hubbard houses for what they are. So, it's not like we're dealing with a new ranch. Right. It is certainly a building that's of a period that's 60 years old now and uh, has, been, has been very well maintained and preserved up to now and should continue to be so. Can I interject again? It's Kim. Please. Um, this house is not a Hubbard. No. No, we, he didn't say it was. Oh, okay. And it was previously approved to have vinyl siding. If so, yeah. are you retracting your approval, original approval? No. Because it's going to come back as a question to me. Okay. If they can duplicate what's on there, then we're saying that yes, grudgingly, we would we approved vinyl siding. However, they cannot. So basically what we're denying is the skipping of the trimmed corners. Oh, you wanted to weigh in? Yeah, um, kind of like what I said earlier, which is that on the one hand, there's nothing easier than reciting a one-story house if you have to. Uh, the amount of materials are less, the amount of staging, a lot of, there's a lot of merit to using natural materials on a small house. Uh, uh, and in some ways uh, it's an easier task than it is on a big house. So I think to a certain extent, 
uh, I can argue in favor of the majority voices here. Um, I guess the reason that I uh, could also argue that I could live with the uh, proposal, even without the clip corners, uh, is because so many houses of that era uh, um, featured other kinds of synthetic siding like uh, uh, asbestos uh, and rippled uh, asbestos or, or rippled uh, cedar that almost looked like uh, the asbestos style shingles rather than uh, the traditional type. And so what you're giving up with uh, cedar impressions is that you're giving up a painted look to the house because instead it's going to have a plastic sheen to it um, depending on the way the sun hits it um, and the light hits it. But it is pretty forgiving for material. And if you don't stare it down, uh, the house may not look substantially different from a freshly painted house of that era. And, and that to me is the argument for considering the alternative. I guess the best uh, place, uh, the best thing that can be said is that we have experimented with this in a number of places. And the experiment is something that uh, is something that doesn't bind us, uh, but we can live from, uh, we can look to and, and learn from. Uh, there's a, a ranch on Garden Street between Broad and Main that is of similar size. Uh, there, are, uh, there are other houses with this siding on it. Um, the house, it loses something uh, then when it has the siding versus wood, but does it lose enough to lose the current character of that home? I just don't know that, um, that that's something I would say. So there you go. I can give an argument for either uh, point of view. Yes. So Doug just proved one, the main thing that we all know, which is that he's a lawyer. <laughs> Arguing either side. Um, I, I come back to the fact that um, it's not asbestos siding. It's not the ripple effect, it's wood. And what is our job but to keep the detail? You know, I, I would agree with you, Claire. You know, on the detail, that's what makes the district the district. But you, you are talking about there's no other architectural features other than these clip corners. There's no, to these peaks, there's no soffit, no overhang. It blends right in. So we're talking about, you know, maybe 10 rows on each, on the three peaks. And uh, especially when this product is going to give you a, replicates the shingle look the best that it could. And, and it is a hot home built 1961. You know, we do see a lot of ranches of this era that do have some type of, uh, unfortunately, vinyl covering, but you know, they're all alternatives. When we did suggest it last week, it, back to Kim's point, you know, when they can miter corners, we, maybe there was a hope that they could have matched these, uh, these clip corners on the peaks. Um, it, it's a tough call. Uh, for me. Yeah. I mean, we're getting, you know, it, it's, oh, I said what I said. Yeah. Got to call the vote, Mark. Yep, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Nay. All right, the vote passes. Motion is denied. We just move on from that now. Yeah. That's it. Now we have the town, right? Yes. We have the town. Poor Peter's been hanging in there all that time. He's not been hanging. Hold, hold on. We've got approval. Uh, well, first of all, we've got to close the public meeting, right? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, approval of minutes. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All right, all in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 All right. Doug. Other business, public comments, general matters of the historic district. 
Jim? I missed my cue earlier, so I'll throw it in now, which is that we, uh, especially this week when we had so much going, uh, we appreciate the efforts of our historic district coordinator and our reporter uh, supporting all of our citizens and all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Public comments on matters to the historic district? No. No? None. Okay. Town of Weathersfield, parking, the old Weathersfield, pre application consultation. Gentlemen, welcome. Good evening. Thank you, Good thank evening. you for having us. Uh, I want to thank the committee for affording staff an opportunity to discuss solutions to what I'm calling a positive, albeit growing problem in old Weathersfield. Um, I'm Gary Evans. I'm the town manager. With me is uh, town engineer, Derek Greger, town uh, planner and economic development director, Peter Gillespie. So they're going to keep me out of trouble, hopefully tonight with you guys. All right. Uh, I don't need to tell this group how attractive the area has become. Residents and visitors are very much drawn to the vibrant mix of shops, businesses, restaurants, retail offices, museums, historic attractions that currently exist. Um, it's a very highly walkable and bikeable area, multiple activities going on throughout the year. Um, and what you're seeing now are just people kind of spread out everywhere and enjoying what Old Weathersfield has to offer. And from an economic development standpoint, um, what's always fascinated me about growth um, is that people will go to a mall, park a quarter of a mile away from the entrance and then walk for two to three miles while shopping in the area. Yet when you come to a quaint old village like Weathersfield or a village like Old Weathersfield, um, everyone needs to park immediately in front of wherever it is that they're going. And um, I would consider Old Weathersfield a very highly successful area, as I mentioned, um, but it's definitely experiencing some growing pains. And the lack of parking, narrow streets, um, it's really resulted in traffic, traffic issues, parking conflicts along that southern portion of Main Street. Um, and that's leading into some visibility issues, concerns for pedestrians, for bicyclists, and overall vehicle traffic. So as a result, we're seeing parking that's starting to spill over within to the neighboring streets, which is creating a lot of friction um, between property owners. Um, and so with the vitality of that area starting to expand, the town really needs to look to balance the needs of that commercial growth that's happening and public safety. Um, and we wanna do so working in conjunction with the Historic District Commission so that we're looking to maintain that historic character that draws so many visitors to Old Weathersfield. Um, so what I wanna provide to the HDC tonight is this initial idea about a phased approach that we created um, around parking, working very closely with the business community, residents, private property owners, local stakeholders, and which includes the old um, Weathersfield Volunteer Fire Department. Um, to do so, to look to expand um, an off-street shared parking area that visitors, residents um, can take advantage of. So, and you know, what we believe the finished product would result in is a more efficient use of those existing properties, which would lead to improved access for, um, for a variety of uses and look to improve the overall aesthetics of the area. So tonight, what I'm looking for is some feedback from the HDC, um, maybe some talk a little bit about concerns so that my team over here can properly address those concerns, come back to the group as a whole um, and, and have some answers for you. And as I mentioned, and thanks Derek for putting that up, we're looking at a phased approach. I'm gonna hand it over to Derek um, to kind of do his thing. Um, and maybe it looks like start by showing messing with me, that was showing me the part. existing conditions and then uh, moving us forward through different components. Kim, can I uh, share my screen? That's why I stopped sharing mine, sorry. Oh, so that was Kim doing that, all right. Throw me off my groove. Everyone see that? Yes. Okay. So, um, 
just to give you uh, an overview of the area. My name is Derek Greger. I'm the town engineer uh, for the record. Um, this plan shows the existing conditions down in the area, just to orient you to it. North is to the right. Um, you see Firehouse One here in the middle of the screen, uh, Webb Dean Stevens to the north, uh, Charles, <clears throat> the Charles Restaurant in Center Street to the south. Right now, um, the, the Firehouse <clears throat> uh, parcel at 171 Main Street is the public parking area. There is parking currently behind 163 Main Street and um, Old Town Cafe that's on private property. For, for these three properties, looking at what's available for space or is actually striped, we estimate there's about 42 existing parking spaces, two of which are handicapped um, in this area behind the uh, fire station. Some of the dashed lines you see here are just estimated parking spots. They aren't striped, but that's approximately what we anticipate is available right now. Um, as far as access to and from, they're, they're all individual lots. Um, 163 Main Street has two-way driveway in and out. Firehouse has two-way driveway in and out. Old Town Cafe currently has very narrow driveway. It's about 12 feet wide and it's, um, it's conflicting traffic in and out. So only one vehicle at a time can, can be in the driveway at once. So, you know, as I was saying, there's physical separation between them. There's landscaped areas, um, curbing, so you can't drive from one property to the other. Um, there's not a lot of parking in close proximity to Main Street. And there's really no designated pedestrian connections to Main Street. Anyone using the lot, um, you know, if they're on the private properties, they're, they're probably utilizing, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the establishments there. However, if they're in the parking lot for a firehouse public parking, there's really no um, pedestrian walkways. They just got to walk in the driveways where the traffic is. So looking at that situation, we've... Um, you know, develop the conceptual plan that I'll bring up that is um, showing an option that we have for um, doing a more, um, you know, extensive uh, parking plan down here to help improve some of those situations I was just highlighting. So this plan is, a, is an overall plan that we, we've developed. Um, like I said, it's very conceptual, but it gives you an idea of what we were thinking. Um, what you see here in the shaded, uh, darker colored areas is what would be new paved areas uh, in the future. You can see the, the new parking lot uh, extends from the very northerly limit of 161 Main Street, which is the Charles. It has a little bit of an impact on that property. And then comes through the three properties we were just discussing and also uh, comes into this area that is currently Webb Dean Stevens uh, property to the south of their uh, gravel road. This would be all public parking through here. Um, right now we're looking at this layout gives us about 119 parking spaces, which is an increase of about 77. Um, with that, it shows five handicapped parking spots um, in different areas of the site. Uh, one's over here, one's out near the fire station. We have a couple over here by uh, Old Town Cafe. And then um, another one is showing up <clears throat> at the far end of the site near the uh, community gardens. With this layout, we would have um, two-way traffic flow still uh, at 163 Main and at the fire station coming in and out. Um, we would be looking at doing a, a concrete pad in front of the garage doors for the fire trucks and also some, some form of uh, pavement markings to kind of try and direct the traffic um, you know, into a normal aisle width instead of it being so open as it is now. Um, you know, there's different options for that. But that's what this is showing. With this plan too, we were looking at potentially making the driveway along the north side of Old Town Cafe uh, one way in, so you could come in this way, but to exit, you'd have to use one of the other driveways um, to prevent that uh, the conflict and, and traffic coming in and out. We've tried to locate parking spaces as close as possible to Main Street. Um, you can see we do have some here that we can extend um, out, uh, opposite the garage doors for the firehouse. Um, we've tried to keep you know, the, the way it's laid out, instead of going with the parking in a east-west direction, it's in a north-south mm -hmm. direction to try and get as much parking uh, in the area as we could to make it convenient. Um, we are showing some pedestrian connections to Main Street. <clears throat> One of them would be, you know, from the rear of Old Town Cafe, maybe between the firehouse and the Old Town Cafe structure coming out to Main Street. 
um, maybe another walkway uh, going along uh, 163 Main Street driveway here, but trying to provide some locations where people can walk where they're not walking um, the same place as the traffic. We are uh, with this plan looking at providing some uh, reserved spaces for the fire department staff. Um, that is showing up at the far west end of the site right now. Um, you can see that there is uh, an impact to the most uh, easterly uh, garden plots that are here right now with this layout. Um, we are maintaining an access point here with some, with you know, by blocking out a space to leave, and it might be a little wider than that in reality, but to leave a little um, area for traffic to get to the gardens. The area to the uh, north of this is what we were looking at is reserved for Wed Dean Stevens uh, Museum staff. So they could park in this area and have access to uh, the facility and leave other parking areas um, in, in, in the right of way and other town lights, lots available um, for, for patrons and other people visiting. We uh, have noted, it was noted on the plan here that the you know, reserve parking for the fire department is really to have parking space available if there is times when the lot is full and there's an emergency. Um, you know, the thought at this point is that if there was an emergency and the lot's only partially full that they would park, you know, as close as they can to their apparatus and their fire station and um, you go on the call. But at least having some in the far back corner ensures that they have parking when they need it if, if it is a busy time down there. With the plan, we'd look at incorporating some LID, some low impact development features. Um, that could be some uh, landscaped islands, which are shown here in green. We could do rain gardens. Um, currently, the Wed Dean Stevens just constructed a small infiltration basin at the west end of the site here. That would need to be modified for this um, to get some additional parking in this area. So we'd keep it, but we can reconfigure it. Um, maybe you know provide some other features in there that would be um, helpful for our LAD um, intent with some of our projects that we're doing now. Um, we would need to do some decorative lighting. I'm I'm just showing some light posts right now in the islands and some other areas of the site. You know, obviously the, the type and style and all that would be a, would be a future discussion, but just wanted to make you aware that we'd be looking at doing something back there. Um, as far as the orientation of the lot, I talk into physical services. They typically plow the existing lot. You can see kind of in the background here from east to west and push towards the garden. So to allow them to continue to do that when the lot's empty, we've oriented the islands this way so they can still plow in the east-west direction. Um, we anticipate in addition to the LID improvements, maybe some rain gardens that there would need to be some drainage improvements put in. Um, this is a fairly sizable area that would be paved. A lot of areas that are not currently paved would be added to it. So we would have drainage improvements. Um, we would uh, be looking at, you know, different options as far as how we construct it. I suspect some of the existing paved areas could be reclaimed and reutilized. Um, other areas would be brand new full depth reconstruction. Um, we haven't done any survey out here yet to really know what the grade impacts are, but there are some great changes that uh, you know, are fairly subtle enough we should be able to accommodate. It. So uh, you know, roughly just to give you an idea right now for budgeting purposes, we're estimating you know, for design and construction, it could be a $800,000 to a million dollar project. Um, you know, at this point, we don't have funding for it. It's something we're looking to, to move towards in the future. So as Gary uh, had mentioned, we, this was our overall uh, long-term plan we'd like to see. Um, I'm gonna share with you another plan that shows what we're looking at maybe in the near term as an interim stage that would um, help encourage use of the existing lot, provide a little bit more parking um, while we're working towards uh, design and securing some funding for the larger project. So this plan here is what we're looking at as an interim phase um, for the most part. Uh, we're looking to maintain the existing uh, pavement that's at the fire station. Uh, this plan does not impact the Old Town Cafe property or 163 Main Street. Those would stay as they are. Um, what you see here again in the shaded area is where we'd be looking to expand the existing pavement, which ends right here, to add some additional parking spaces. Um, we're expecting that would be a, a just a gravel surface or uh, millings that we have on hand. 
it's that wouldn't be a fully paved area for now. Um, but it would be, um, you know, graded out and usable for parking and, you know, for people to walk on and be safe. Right now in this area, as far as what's available at 171 Main Street, we have about 27 spaces um, shown on the plan here, um, including the adjacent properties. With this, we end up with about 55 spaces. That's an increase of 28. Um, it includes taking the two handicapped spots I noted that are behind the firehouse now and moving them over in this area where they're a little more accessible to Main Street. With the plan here, we are um, potentially looking at reserving these spaces. Uh, there's eight of them along the north side of the parking lot, as well as four over near the firehouse for fire department staff. And we would be looking at reserving a space in here for uh, Webb Dean Stevens Museum staff to utilize this this area now if you've been back there is all currently gravel um, this was used as the construction uh, access point and work area for storage of materials during the the museum expansion project so right now it's pretty well graded out this is essentially um, you know where they're parking for the most part now but we would be pushing a little bit into that area to provide some more parking for the public and then somehow sign this as staff parking only um, the one thing that uh, with this plan, just to make you aware of, there's an old uh, evergreen tree here in the middle of the, what's the lot now. Uh, we would be looking to take that down to provide enough space for the parking here. And it would also be necessary once we get to our longer term project to, um, to re reconstruct and build parking in this area. With this, we would still maintain the access to the gravel road um, along the uh, community gardens. Um, as you can see, the, the white here shows the limits of the gardens as they are today. So we're, we anticipate we would not need to affect any of the plots with this one. We're not going as far west as with the overall plan. So we could do this and still maintain all the uh, 70 or so plots that we have available. Um, the plan will require some restriping. And you can see here on the paved areas, I'm looking at just blacking out some of the existing uh, lines that are out there for parking, widening out the aisles a little bit, and then doing some restriping to um, provide, you know, normal nine by 18 parking spaces, uh, normal 24 foot aisle widths that would be a little more comfortable than some of the narrow aisles that are out there right now. Um, the thought with this was just to maximize the use of the existing infrastructure to the extent we can and just do a smaller expansion. Um, we were anticipating this could be this is work that could be done by town crews um, utilizing existing materials we have on hand so the cost would be relatively inexpensive and uh, as a way to start um, improving or trying to provide um, better utilization of, of the lot for uh, the downtown area so with that that was um, those are the plans that we're we wanted to present tonight, um, you know, certainly uh, if anyone has questions or thoughts, uh, as, as Gary mentioned, we're looking for some feedback and uh, just to get uh, your, your thoughts on what you see for, for this plan initially and also uh, the longer uh, term overall plan um, on what you like, what you don't like. And that way we have that information as we move forward. Derek, my first question is, are we missing a house on this property? Hmm. Um, where are we talking? Right over here yeah. on center street yeah yeah this these this aerial is from 2017 so yes there is a new residential home here that is not shown yeah because i was i actually had lunch with charles today looking at the whole parking and i ended up having park the fire department way in the back there and walked over and i was just noticing that a lot of the back of the hughes property that was had for some reason has some chairs back there now like a little sitting area with um, Adirondack chairs and little barrels. I don't know what that's for, but I just, I was noticing it was really close to that uh, back, that homeowner's back line there. And he doesn't have a very big fence. So my, I mean, you know, I, I love the idea. I love, especially this, this part. Clearly this doesn't uh, incorporate the next generation, which is the, the bigger view. And I, I'm all about progression and moving there, but um, I just I, personally, from a homeowner standpoint, standpoint, I think I'd probably want to stay a little bit farther away from the back of that property. Personally, you know, just I think you know, when it comes to that kind of thing and building it up right on someone's backyard, that would be my only 
only concern. Yeah. Everything else is pretty residential. I mean, taking a little bit of the garden space back. You know, I don't know. I don't, I don't you mean know. In, the in the larger plan? Yeah, in the larger plan. Yeah, Mark, the, um, there's a yoga studio on the second story at the Hughes property now. Okay. And they're doing classes back there. Interesting, River Rock is no longer doing yoga. Hmm. And so one of the instructors has opened it up. Um, okay. They went to school with my kids. It's a little scary. Elementary school, no less. I feel old. Um, you know, I, I have such mixed feelings about parking because I think what Gary says is true. I mean, we have this huge parking lot right behind Keeney, and it's really not very far. Um, I don't, I don't entirely understand, uh, you know, but um, the good things about this plan are that the new proposed, the three new spaces are not paved, they're graded. I certainly hope, although this is not an HTC perspective, I certainly hope the town considers things like semi-permeable pavement and other issues that help with runoff and help, um, you know, with some of the environmental impact of massive new paved spaces. Um, not quite sure how they're gonna, I guess they're gonna do eminent domain to grab the properties from Hughes and the old town to create the next piece, but that's not my problem. No, just, um, just, just to jump in on that, we are cooperatively working with each one of the property owners. So there would be cross easements and uh, we would not be acquiring the property. We would not be using eminent domain or anything like that. It would be a cooperative venture amongst the four different property owners. Okay. I, yes. Uh, so if it's my turn, I, I'll uh, add a word or two. Um, I would have to say that um, the more modest proposal is, I think, the best place to begin with, uh, even though uh, it may feel duplicative uh, if you're ending up and uh, with a bigger proposal, but I like the smaller one because it leaves that green space uh, in the back of the Hughes property, which I think has already been used to really nice purpose during Bicycles on Main. It's been like a little festival area. And uh, certainly if there's a yoga studio there, it's nice that there's some grass. I don't have the same I have the same neighborly consideration for the new neighbor there. Um, uh, but of course the small fence he put in was at a different time when there wasn't as much activity there. So it, it just may be that he, he will need a different fence than he currently has there. Um, at the same time, I don't necessarily wanna put cars on the other side of it uh, when it's going to such good use now. I also like the more orderly nature of the parking in the vast area that's uh, behind the firehouse right now, uh, because it really is so undefined that uh, I think people aren't habited into which place to put their cars. And so there's much less use that's happening there than could uh, if it were organized. And so I'm, I'm in favor of the stripings. I kind of liked the, this pattern better as well because as you look in from Main Street, you have a straight shot down to the gardens rather than uh, these rows of, um, uh, of cars that kind of block the view um, and have these islands that are really narrow. Uh, so they don't really have much impact on the view from Main Street. Um, they're really more beneficial to views that the public isn't really going to have uh, from the north and south. Uh, or at least not as much. I also think that it's important to have enough room to allow people to get back to the garden. And I kind of like how in this plan, it looks like that access is available from uh, perhaps the corner space uh, uh, to the north of that row that's on the grass um, uh, or something like that, you know, in line with the path. Um, I think that you want that road to be visible. Uh, you, and I realize that uh, 
there was one space dedicated to it in the big plan and it could be a little bit wider, but I do like the idea that that road has a connection to the lot. And then finally, the last thing I'd say is that uh, it's, I think that we are at the stage where there's been enough growth in Old Weathersfield that when you consider if there's a wedding going on at the Keeney and an event going on at Webb Dean Stevens, that you would need another parking area uh, like this. Uh, and it, this is the logical place for it to be. And I think that it, if it's done in a nice fashion, just like the parking lot behind the Keeney, it could be something attractive uh, and, and something of a gateway. Certainly when the cars are all there, you're not gonna be able to see the community gardens, but from a distance, you can tell it's a, a, a gardened area. And I think that uh, whether it's in season or off season, you still want it to look good. And right now it never really is as defined as it should be. Whenever I'm driving there, I always worry that I'm intruding upon the fire station in some way or, or other. So. Uh, I, I'm a real believer in trying to maximize the floor plan of this more modest proposal to begin with. And then if we should have an embarrassment of riches, then maybe have uh, more of a discussion about where to go from here. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for uh, serving the town and being here with us so late tonight. Question, uh, I guess more so for the engineer uh, and maybe Pete as well too. The section that is, where the seven spaces are that to the, it's closer to the uh, Web Dean number with seven spaces there. And, and again, that was gonna be milling and, and uh, just kind of a gravel mix. Why was, why was that not extended up to the Old Town property line or what was the feeling? I know the retention pond is north of it. You're right where you are right there. Is that yeah, the space reserved for W? Yeah. I think we were just trying to keep in the existing graveled area that's been used for the construction. You see the white fence is roughly where they've been working to. Yes. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of undergrowth there and stuff too. I just, yeah, there's some vegetation utilized. there we were going to try yeah. and keep. Okay. Which I suppose brings up, uh, go, you know, look at what we're looking at here is, Sort of a holding pattern, which would help ease the uh, parking issue right now. But long term, if everything is successful, just going to make it worse. Uh, so, looking at the first plan that you presented, aesthetically, I think will make very little impact on the district uh, as far as we're concerned. The one concern I have is the loss of the vegetation that is between the firehouse and the Hughes property in that that tends to soften the view into uh, the parking lots now. And if that goes away, you're gonna have an awful lot of hard surface with very little visual stuff to break that and to soften it. I agree, Vasek, a hundred percent. I think that that, that will be the, the main impact from Main Street that you see is that that, that whole area now will be paved. Right. When it's cars are parked there, you've got cars parked. When it's not, you're gonna look into this very large space now that you have access to, which you don't have before. So if we're gonna look at that plan, those spaces, I can't count seven and four, Eight, nine, 10, 11. Those 11 spaces are the most problematic spaces to me. I could be wrong, and Peter and Derek, you were out there recently. Is that green space still there? This picture is four years old. Yeah. The, the existing pine trees um, are all gone. They've been replaced with uh, smaller uh, trees. But I think the point that um, was being made is there is a grass area there. Uh, there is some vegetation there. Yep. And by moving the parking closer to the Hughes building, it's all just asphalt. So I, I yeah. Yeah, I yeah. get the point. I get that. Yeah, it's I'm sure something can be done. It might cost you a few parking spaces, but I'm sure you can leave a few few plantings in there of some sort to help soften it. 
Well, the, the issue is the turning radius because of the alignment of the uh, garage doors of the fire station. When the guys come out with the, the larger vehicles and they mm -hmm. turn to the left, uh, yep. those spaces needed to be closer to Hughes property. So the option would be to uh, eliminate them um, as, as exists today. Well, I'm just wondering mm -hmm. if some planting could be done basically where the proposed handicap spot is now. Yeah, take out, take out the first two or three and put something big there that blocks the rest. Just a thought. I mean, right, right. Like a bump out with some with some shrubbery in it. So it you guys are good at that. Yeah. You guys are good at thinking these things too. I mean, you've come up with a great plan uh, that I think will serve wonderfully. And it's you, you're looking for input. And my one little bit of input is if all that hard surface can be softened in some way, that'll be wonderful. Yeah, no, you guys, you guys have made a lot of really good observations, so we appreciate that. Is there a connection to the existing Charles? Uh, can you slide over here? I guess as we face it, our left of the screen. Is there going to be a cutout through there as well? It's a tiny little bit of green sidewalk there. Yeah, yeah that would make a lot of sense. Just a pedestrian connection. Oh, just parks, just a walkway. Yep. Okay. So I, I might also suggest some some green around the edges of the lot, maybe some arborvitaes um, behind some of the property, the neighbor's property, just to be um, to make it more uh, private, to give privacy to the neighbors, because they're going to be enclosed with parking. And I also um, I, I'm not very comfortable with um, people in and out of their cars. Um, it by the fire store doors and by the fire station. Those, it just, they're going out on an emergency and those trucks are gonna pull out. And so it will be, um, I'm, I know I wouldn't park in front of those doors and I don't know if people would feel comfortable parking in front of those doors. The other thing I'll say is the signage. I know I was at the Charles this weekend. It was a great place to be. And um, I, I parked in back of the Hughes property, but I thought it was private property and we shouldn't park there. So perhaps some signage at this early point that this is available. Um, even though I live in the area, I wasn't aware of that. So that would be nice to, to um, make public. Um, some place to start with that. Um, I don't even know if you, with this, what signage would say, this is where you're gonna go, perhaps with all the new construction, people would see it. But I, I also agree with Chris that an east-west alignment of the lines um, might be a bit cleaner. Um, you wouldn't see all the cars. You know, it, it just it just looked cleaner to the eye. Um, people are going to have to go in and around and back, and it just looked a bit easier. With with I don't know if you fit more spaces in this way, and that's why it's designed this way. I'm sure you've tried to do it many different ways. Um, the other thing I had was. Um, where the firemen park and why I'm on safety, I'm not quite sure, but having them park in the back corner, you know, you can assume that probably during the busy times of day, knowing what the street looks like right now, that this is this will fill up. And I just think that they should have spots, at least for somewhere closer to the firehouse where they're not running through the parking lot to get to the truck. Um, and I think that would just be um, grateful for their service um, and the right thing to do. Um, I do think that this is a good place to locate it. I would like to see that, um, you know, how are we going to get people off the street? Because I have seen a lot of um, people turning around and turning around, even when they're at the Keeney and not wanting to pull in these driveways and pull in these spots. And um, I, maybe we need to think a little bit hard about how do we get people to, to pull into these driveways because they're not doing it. And having lived on Hartford Avenue for long enough and dealt with parking down here, um, I've seen that myself. And so um, I think um, perhaps as we discuss this with the neighbors and the neighborhood on um, the village, we need to think a little bit harder about signage and, and how just um, no parking perhaps on the streets um, during certain times of the day. And, and what do we do with that? So. Um, I, I like the idea. I, I, I don't like the, um, taking away some of the trees. I, I do think trees need to be added in green. And that's what I've noted as Comstock has developed and as the Creamery has developed that the need for green space and um, trees, especially in the village is essential just to maintain um, a peacefulness um, that we try to maintain here. 
right? <coughs> the only the only thing I'll add, and it's not HTC, but I have you guys, um, is a request that we think about our tree and um, shrub choices with an eye to native species. I noticed um, down State Street, y'all have, I think it was the town, it looked like town employees have come in with a lot of pink pom-pom trees. Um, I understand why, because you've got them in front of DMV already. They're not native. They're not helping anything. So just, just, a, little, um, just a little edge for that, not HTC at all. I like that. Thank you. But if we're gonna put something in, slant it that way. <laughs> I guess I'll just jump on too, not HDC, but uh, for our friends on Center Street <laughs> right, and others. I open the door. No, that's okay. This is this is a parking lot. But if if this again as this develops, is there more question for I guess for the town manager as well? I'll, will you be limiting on street parking to odd or evens or, or times or what's your feeling on that or what's the long range? Gary, you want me to jump in on that? Yeah, if you'd like to start. You can. Sure. Um, so, so at some point in the, uh, without specifying a timeline, uh, in the near future, we're, we're going to be repaving uh, Main Street. Uh, at that point, we've talked about um, prohibiting parking in certain areas uh, and specifically designating where people can park. Um, you know, Essex does a nice job of doing that and people respect staying, you know, between the lines. So, uh, we're working on kind of an overall plan to uh, both prohibit and encourage where people should park and where they shouldn't park. So, but we don't want to do that in advance of, you know, repaving the entire uh, street. So, um, and there would be signage uh, associated with that as well. And to Peter's point, you have to provide alternatives for people to park typically first before you start making bold moves like that. So you can direct people where to go and they feel comfortable. So just on Main Street, then you'll have the painted stripes for car parking to be within those uh, markers, potentially, uh, but not any of the side streets, not well, we've Church started, Street. No. Well, we started the conversation uh, about Center Street with some of the residents. Um, we would probably extend the striping to um, Church Street. Um, I'm not sure we would go all the way down to Garden Street. Um, but we obviously don't want to encourage um, anyone um, who's visiting the businesses to park on Center Street. So, um, so we would look at each one of those side streets probably individually and separately before we make any final decisions. So, um, but Center Street is obviously uh, right now the you know the hotter hotter topic of the of the side streets in terms of parking. I saw a woman the other day on Center Street coming in out of state plates and knocked down one of the street signs or the lawn signs in the snow shelf that says, you know, please, please do not park here. here. And then she put yeah. the sign back up and but continued to walk down. Uh, well, that was nice of her. Yes, was, oh, yeah. Was, she put awesome. it back. She's <laughs> awesome. respectful. Yeah. And the, and the Charles is doing everything. You know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, they they put it on their website. They put those signs up. We've let them borrow some of our A-frame signs. So it's an ongoing. Uh, yeah. battle and you know human behavior is is what it is so uh, and he does a good job of getting his employees to park in the Keeney and I've seen them you know do that so uh, it's just a it's just an ongoing challenge so hopefully we think this will uh, you know be a big step in the right direction and uh, uh, along with some of the other things we're thinking about doing. Peter uh, I've heard uh, things to the contrary though about how things are going on Center Street. And many, I, I have to say, whenever I've been there on the weekend, I haven't really seen any patrols from the restaurant occurring on uh, Center. I think they're busy with their uh, customers. And so it's uh, not, uh, you know, it's understandable. I think that their focus is not on Center Street, but when there isn't a focus on Center Street, there are all kinds of cars on Center Street. So I guess I have uh, two thoughts. One is, is there a reason why Center Street hasn't been posted no parking? Is it because 
you don't want to deprive the homeowners of the ability to park on the street? Uh, the, the homeowners have talked to us about a variety of options. They at one point wanted, uh, you know, a resident parking program, which is very difficult to uh, enforce. Uh, we certainly don't want to, you know, prevent the residents from parking on the street as well. We've talked about maybe a certain stretch of Center Street as being, you know, more specifically uh, identified as no parking. So uh, we are looking at some options, but um, it's probably still a little premature to uh, nail down anything specifically. But um, yes, I mean, certainly there are there are people who do park there and we do get uh, the phone calls from the residents. So uh, it is a topic we are, we're we're probably going to be sitting down with the residents in the in the very near future to get some more direct input from them as to what they think might be the best uh, strategy. So, and obviously the governor's executive order, which allows them to have the tent in their parking lot, losing, you know, 14 spaces doesn't, doesn't help either. So. The, um, you know, I think that to a certain extent, the question may be, would the residents in the first half of Center Street be willing to trade no on-street parking right in front of their house for a no parking zone. And if that ends up pushing all the parking down to the other half, maybe that half of the street adopts the same thing. But to me, if uh, I, in some ways, I conceptually could, uh, don't disagree with parking on that street, but because so many folks look at it as a commercialization of a residential street, I think that I would go to the extreme of having posted no parking there and then saving the Charles the enforcement uh, and saving the neighbors the burden of it because you could just occasionally send, you know, the Charles could say, you know, you're gonna get ticketed if you park there. So, and, and you have all these other places where you can go. But I think right now the Charles's signs are relatively low. People from outside the area aren't paying attention to them by the time they are, are they've pulled in and by then it seems like it's more trouble than it's worth to move the vehicle. So for with all the best of intentions, I think of the both the businesses and the homeowners, um, I think that going to an extreme of having no parking might be an experiment worth trying. Thank yeah. you. Sure. So if I can just add to that, Doug, one of the things they did on Harford Avenue, because we suffered from parking for, for many years, is they put um, parking only on one side of the street, which alleviated a lot of the problems with traffic and um, a lot of the problems with just do doors and an you know, overcrowded parking situation. So I have to say thank you, Mr. Gillespie for that. That was a, a great idea and it truly works. And that might be something that you would like to um, duplicate on Center Street, even just for the time being. But I have to say, and this is not HDC, but here I am. So um, I was at the Charles and um, while we were there, there were two policemen that were walking and apparently their cruiser had to park way down and I couldn't see them. So I thought they were beat cops. I thought that um, cops had been assigned. And in my mind, as someone who worked at HPD for many years, that they walked from, you know, maybe went from the Charles up to the Standish. And that so here I am thinking about this and I'm enjoying this thought. Well, with all the people in our town and all the all the parking problems, and it would be great, I think, a public relation. And it's an idea, and it doesn't belong here, but here it is, since you're here, that that there be assigned a beat officer, um, especially during the day or in the evening on the weekends, to you know, to walk up and down to our town. So there's my two cents. Maybe a bike patrol. Yeah, absolutely. That's above my pay grade, so. <laughs> no reason you can't say anything about it. That's right. That's right. All right. Okay. Lots of food for thought. So yeah, we're at the early stages, and uh, uh, we'll take all of this under advisement. And uh, we are pursuing some funding as well, uh, with the hopes that something might open up and uh, give us more of a green light to move this to another another design phase, but we will certainly uh, be circling back with you folks uh, at the appropriate times. And uh, we, we certainly appreciate all the feedback. Thank you for the presentation. Certainly. Appreciate the time and the opportunity to get in front of you guys.
thank you for sticking around until 10 30. Um, <laughs> we're sorry well, it took so long yeah actually long this time. is an early night for me but i get paid so so do we they double our salary <laughs> we do <laughs> i think if we in include some fencing in our project we're sure to be approved absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Apparently, only tonight this was a one-time shot <laughs> <laughs> Just remember, nice side facing the neighbors. Right, that's right. And Sherwin-William has some paint colors that we can use. So I've learned that's a lot. Right. right. Thank you again. Right. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you, right. everyone. Thank, Thank you. Guys. you. Have All a good night. Thank you, everyone. All right. So uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much for your patience tonight. Good Have night. Great, night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Well done, Mark. Good luck with the wedding, Claire. Thank you. Talk to you all soon. Congratulations. Right. Want to see Thank pictures. You.